prayer. Almighty Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you that this is a year of going and glorying, and we thank you for each and every business leader that's here is going to go in glory, and they are going to have wonderful testimonies in their businesses. May you grant them wisdom, understanding, and knowledge in what they have to execute in their business, that it will thrive and, be, and leave a legacy behind for people to thrive from. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Um, I would like to request those at the far back to move to the front. If you have a seat in front of you, just move to the front. There's a whole table there that's empty, so if you're at the back, please feel free. You never know your favorite client is at that table. Thank you. Oh, you want the window, eh? Okay. Perfect. Welcome to School of Practical Business, class of 2024. To all the students, our guests, we are honored to have you here. I hope you consider to stick with us till the end of the year as a student. Um, I have two registration sheets here. If you have not registered as a guest or student, guest or student. So they'll be passing around from each table. Thank you. Um, so before our principal for the Harvest Institute is in the house, Pastor Dr. Fiona Mulira. <laughs> And then we are also honored to have the team lead for the School of Practical Business, Pastor Chris Kawesa as well. But before we hear from them, I would like each one of us to introduce yourself, your name, your business, and what your business does. Because I believe our biggest clientele is within the room. So we'll start from this table. You introduce your name, your business and what your business does. Thank you so much. My name is Jennifer Tumukunde. I lead the team at the Nutrition Garage. At the Nutrition Garage, we do everything healthy living from nutrition coaching and counseling, uh, doing uh, meal plans and actual meals. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Isabella Triagenda. I'm the team leader at Karuka Agencies Limited, which is the sole importer and distributor of Robertson Wines in Uganda. Thank you. Solomon Tumwesje, I lead the team at Apt Media. We are into media production, specifically speaking, photography, video production. Thank you. I am Martin Matovu. I lead the team at uh, Kanzu Code. We basically do everything software, so we build the nice mobile applications, websites, and many other custom solutions that um, can be helpful in your business. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Weberforce Bishavorwa. I lead a, a team at Tamam Group of companies we deal in grain, both trading locally and exporting to in our neighboring countries. Thank you. I'm Christine Kantengwa, Tina Food Store. We deal in produce, beans, rice. Yeah, basically that. Thank you. Um, good afternoon, members. My name is Parfen Duayo um, from Holvada Limited. We nurture skills and promote talents. Uh, so we train kids and students, like anyone among you, in different skills like music, um, like chess, and then we send them abroad to go and compete. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Bruce Akampulida, Bracon Consults. We deal in engineering and real estate. I'm Melody Okuba. I work with City on a Hill Psychosocial Support Consultants. We do counseling, psychotherapy, and uh, consultancies, trainings. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Yes, my name is Bukenya Jonathan Mwanguzi. 
Uh, I lead at uh, Antico Technologies. We are a fintech. We basically design technology for banks and financial institutes. Hi, everyone. Hi. Wow. Anyway, um, name is Moses Kibwata. I lead at the, I lead the team at Tiranasia Foods. We produce flavored peanut butter and a range of other um, condiments which will come out on the market soon. Good afternoon. Gloria Nachiguli is my name from Kanzu Finance Limited. Um, customized software. We push the product Kanzu Banking, uh, which is a software application for circles, VSLs, um, microfinance institutions. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Manuela Pachutom Londo. Most of my social media platforms use Manuela P. Mulondo as opposed to the Pashuto. Um, I'm the vision bearer of the Cradle. The Cradle is a child care and lactation service designed for the workplace. You are my client or know my client. If you have a child under the age of three and you know and have gone to school and have learned the importance of early stimulation for a child, in the first 1,000 days of your, their lives, and you no longer want to leave them with inexperienced, uneducated house helps because they, you are the stewards of the children that God has put in your care. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Rosette. Uh, I lead Red Apparel. We make everything, all customized outfits, uniforms, everything. Good afternoon. My name is Sarah Chinji Chama. I am a farmer, but one of my companies that brings me here that I want to scale is MacNut. Mark Nut Plus, I grow macadamia nuts and roast and package, and that's why I'm here. Good afternoon. My name is Steven Amanya, team lead at Imara Concepts Limited. We help people keep fit while at work. So you do not have to get into your car, drive to the gym. We bring the gym to your office. And also, when you have to have company retreats, we help organize that for you. So don't get into a jam wondering where you're going to work out. Just, we'll come to you. Thank you. Already. Hi, my name is Bridget Nambo Sumba. Um, I do three major things, but they all involve organizing businesses. So uh, I'm a lawyer by training. So one of my businesses is CM Advocates, which is a regional law firm. We're in Uganda, Kenya, um, Nigeria, and most recently, Zambia. Um, the other business we do is uh, Bellmark, which is a company secretarial consultancy. And then the other one is Numbridge, which is a tech, legal tech company, trying to digitize everything company secretarial. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Adeline Anyait Dramadri. I'm currently employed at ProClean Services. We offer professional cleaning services for both offices and homes. Hello, my name is Jackie Secheru. I'm visiting, <laughs> um, but um, the company I think I'm going to represent today is uh, Waterworks. We do, it's a premium car wash, um, automated car wash services um, with Total, car, at Total petrol stations, and um, we do do a great job with your cars. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Birunji Fiona Ocheng. I 
I'm a team leader with Zazu. Um, Zazu leads, uh, basically is in restaurant, uh, cafes and pastries. And I'm glad to be here. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Brenda Omjisha, and I'm a team leader at Universal Institute, and we are a training center for children above 18. Yes. Hello, everyone. I'm Christine Semgo Mamogeza. I'm an interior designer by profession, banker as well, from ex-banker, sorry. Um, my passion is to create objects using, uh, de decor objects, accents using locally sourced materials. I'm a boo-boo girl, and uh, I love making home spaces beautiful. I'm passionate about metal, glass, mirror. I'm passionate about color, and... Um, I'm here to, I'm self-employed, I'm here to expand and become a business owner. <laughs> and I also have a passion for helping needy mothers. So I run a charity that helps needy pregnant mothers. I partner with, I partner with uh, centers like Wakisa and government health centers to support mothers with mama kids and children uh, with the, uh, clothes from zero to zero months to 12 months zero to 12 months yes so i'm looking to my my charity is called movement of mercy mom so i'm also looking to see how i can organize that from a one person thing to something scalable yes. good afternoon everyone i'm called felix and uh, founder pena ministries it's an organization that empowers vulnerable families to break the cycles of poverty through education and economic support. And in that, we have a social venture called Coffee for Us. It deals with, uh, uh, we're starting up a demonstration farm where we want to empower families to grow coffee, then we trade in coffee. But Coffee for Us is in value addition. Here we sell coffee powder to your cup or cafes and coffee beans as well, yeah. Oh, I came with my colleague as well. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Brian Chatuka is my name. And uh, under Penda Ministries and uh, under the venture Coffee for Us, I'm the marketing and sales manager. So I'm representing Coffee for Us as a marketing and sales manager. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Elizabeth Secheru. The company is Tonda World. Tonda World does corporate gifting, like we package the gifts. We also deal with kids' spaces, designing and painting, name it, and also personalized um, interior accessories. Good afternoon to you all. Uh, do we all have a carpenter who doesn't remember if you ordered for a bed or a chair? <laughs> <laughs> My name is Kaja Ronald. Uh, I'm a trained architect, but I decided to go and bring a professional touch to the carpentry world. So I don't just do carpentry, I give you a beautiful space. The company is called Kaja Ronald, K A W J A. We mainly put our work on Instagram. Thank you. <clears throat> Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Baguma John. I am a software engineer by profession, a product designer, graphic designer, uh, everything design. But uh, <laughs> my company that brought me here is called Guardian Lamps. And um, we make, I make, um, it's a one-man show, <laughs> so <laughs> I make uh, bedside lamps out of uh, PVC, and they're fully handmade. 
but I am stuck. <laughs> I'm stuck and I need to, to scale up. So that's why I'm here. Thank you. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Richard Kwasa. Uh, I work with Gilead Limited. Uh, we are community pharmacists uh, with a chain of pharmacies across. Uh, we deal in pharmaceuticals, um, food supplements, and cosmetics. And of course, the knowledge that can help you to, to use them so you can live a happy and long life. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, Kugonza Ephraim, certified businessman and student. But uh, because of the education system of Uganda, the business was put on hold, but it's coming back. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Felix Obete. Um, by profession, I'm a land surveyor. Just simply that associated mapping professionals. But uh, for this uh, school, I'm coming as a team lead of Verilib, and we help local producers gain trust with the consumers. Thank you. Good, good afternoon. I'm called Otala Emmanuel uh, by training, and I am the team lead of uh, City Light Supermarket, Buziga and as well uh, active farm pharmaceutical it's a pharmacy business and uh, we intend to provide quality care to the suburbs around kampala all right good afternoon my name is mohindo joshua uh i don't know if i have a business but uh, it's pending, pending. It's supposed to be mobile car detailing and wash. Right now, it's not yet like a serious deal. Still with my neighbors. Yeah, but I've come to make it a practical business. That's why I'm here. Good afternoon, everyone. Grace Adiba is my name. I'm currently employed at Brin Cafe. Hello, good afternoon. My name is Augustine Molindo. I come from Crystal Detergents, Uganda Limited. Uh, we produce quality user friendly detergent. And we also offer cleaning services. So we complement our detergents to do the cleaning. So everyone here is my potential client because you all need a quality liquid detergent in your house. Yes. Good afternoon, uh, all of us. I'm called Timothy Triatingura. I'm a land surveyor by profession. So I do titling of land, subdivision of land, opening of boundaries, and other surveys for architectural works, engineering works. And as a side hustle, I, I do mushroom farming. So in case you are a health enthusiast and you want to eat healthy, you can contact me for some fresh mushrooms. Good afternoon. My name is Naya Balavi Kubo. I started Aries, and Aries does art, as one department, and architecture, that is design and build, as another. So the idea is to be able to scale up to where the art can be a, a, a company of its own, and the architecture can be a company of its own, because in themselves, they are a bit of work. So balancing is a bit tricky now. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Rita Kiba from Margaritas Food and Beverages. We do outdoor catering, bakery, and all things food and beverages. Good afternoon. 
My name is Raphael Kiba. I'm here on behalf of Splendid Media. We are in design, print, and branding. Our passion is to get ideas from minds to visual substrates, something that you can touch and see. Good afternoon, everyone. I feel grateful to be part of the team uh, in the first uh, School of Practical Business. My name is Nats Metolde. Um, my business or my company name is Arubha Flower Shop. I am into flower marketing. I can prepare for uh, birthdays, weddings, ceremonies, funerals. Uh, I can send as uh, like to express your feelings to your friends and graduations. Like to begin with, I was like I love flowers. And as they say, do what you love and everything will follow. I try to uh, practice a business on what I love. I love flowers. That's uh, the starting point. And now I'm here to improve my business uh, educationally and to improve my leadership qualities. I'm happy to, to be part of you. Thank you very much. Hi everyone, good afternoon. My name is Peniel Namara Grace. I uh, work, I'm a clinic officer by training and healthcare administrator. I work with Rubale People's Health Clinic, which is basically any, everything to do with health and Medicare. Yeah, so we are he I'm here because we are looking to scale the business, though it's been, uh, it's been around for a while almost 25 years, but scale now. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Alan Mosoke. I am an interior designer, and I'm the lead designer and founder of Bumba Interiors. It's a business that does carpentry and interior design. I'm happy to be here. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Koburonga Patience. I am a public servant. I am here to plan for retirement in the next 35 years. And um, <laughs> so um, the company, the first company is called Ohana Media and we do branding and it's the first of very many companies that I'm going to start. Um, good afternoon, everybody. I am Tina Ntulo. And I am the chief steward at the Malakite Center for Mental Health. I've been doing mental health work for over 27 years, and God finally promoted me to set up something that I'm stewarding directly to him. So I'm grateful. Uh, we do counseling services, mental health education talks, emotional literacy talks, arbitrations, and a whole sort of workplace mental health programs. So we are planning to be your one-stop shop for your mental health care. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Nicole Kabatesi Lutara. I am a marketing team lead at Hasili Beverages, brand name Expresso. We are the leading service provider of hot beverages from vending machines. We serve at events in high traffic areas and offices, in um, supermarkets, wherever you'd like us to have. Our machines are portable and movable and easy to use and produce a very delicious beverage. Yes, so I'm here to actually, we're here to learn new principles to be able to not just scale but improve our service and make sure that the company goes on for forever, lives on <laughs> beyond many of us. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Achilu Imbazi. I am a communication specialist. I run a company called Great Lakes Media, and we're into communication. You know, communication strategies, training, uh, but also some bit of PR and productions. 
Then there is also a second company called Great Lakes Grains. Uh, that one is into grains, you know, uh, including the black gold, which is coffee. I'm here. Um, yeah, the problem is, uh, yeah, we have those two companies, but I'm still broke. So I'm here to learn how to manage my money better, how to improve on the leadership of these companies uh, so that I can also enjoy life the way I know some of the other rich guys in here do. <laughs> Thank you so much. Good afternoon, everyone. Derek Chiviriga is the other name. Biotech Supplies, Uganda. We deal in medical devices, equipment, and diagnostics. Good afternoon. My name is Shali Irene Tangaya. Uh, my business is called Biteworth, and we do beverages and food, snacks. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Matthias Nazio. I am an accountant by training. The brand I'm representing today is uh, Infrastructure Development and Management Limited. It's a hub of uh, multi-discipline consultants giving uh, business solutions in the different uh, fields. So on that team, I'm a, a financial specialist and strategy. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Viola Atire, uh, currently employed in the, the organization that collects revenue for the country. But what brings me here today, so what brings me today is uh, my side gig, my business, which is Frizzy Dots Kids Hub. Um, I did in children's things like children, clothes, shoes, bags, whatever you think about children. And I've seen my potential clients around already. Yeah, and I have from zero to 12 years, like newborn, and then shopping for the new mothers because usually they don't know what they're supposed to have. And I know you have a friend who has a friend who has a friend who is pregnant or yet to be pregnant. Yes, so I'm here to see how best I can run my business and maybe expand it from one employee to others. Thank you. Okay. Good afternoon. My name is Grace Sally. Um, I'm purely here for knowledge gain. I'm just a girl with business dreams that haven't yet manifested. But currently, I do human resource for practice. Thank you so much. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Jacqueline Lotaya. Currently, I run a fashion house and last year, a kindergarten. Thank you. Has everyone introduced themselves? Not really. Okay. Praise the Lord. Uh, Jonathan Monks is my name. I'm a land surveyor by profession. I'm representing Zoe Surveyors. We are land survey consultants, and we do real estate. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I hope you can hear me. Yes, I'm called Irene Namujishaliazi, and I'm a director at Virin Enterprises. And uh, I'm glad to be here. I came to this course because I wanted to grow my company and to improve on it and also to improve on the way I'm probably managing it and also to get more and more ideas. And right now, uh, my office is on Krumah Road, Stroke Nasa Road, but I'm not one of those people who do <laughs> funny things <laughs> like we are, we are known and uh, I'm happy to be here. Okay. I, 
think that's everyone, right? Um, so just a little guidelines for the facilities. If you would like to go to the bathroom to check if your makeup is okay or to <laughs> fix your collar outside the second door on the, on the left are the bathrooms, every floor all the way down. That's where the bathrooms are. Good? Yes. So thank you so much for introducing yourself and your businesses. I know who to go to for mushrooms. The, the legal mushrooms. Yes. <laughs> so without further ado, I would like to invite Pastor Chris. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Please take your seat. Uh, first of all, I'm going to first invite uh, Pastor Fiona to say hello to us, then I'll come back. Pastor Fiona, you're welcome. Thank you, Pastor Chris. I know that today is open day, but I would want to boldly welcome School of Practical Business 2024. <laughs> You're very welcome. Um, I believe one of the things that I was thinking about when he told me I was going to speak, I didn't expect to speak here today, but one of the things that I thought about was the business that I do. Is if I were to add three zeros to last year's annual revenue, what would it look like? How would I plan for it? And I thought that that's probably something that you could think about. That at the end of this year, if you were to add three zeros, actually, let me move from annual revenue to net profit that you made last year as a result of this class. I think you would really sign up. You would drink to that. So let's think about that in terms of <laughs> your drinking, in terms of scalability, expansion. If you were to think about um, the scope, your current scope, uh, we've heard of people that are taking care of young generations, young minds, uh, those that are taking care of mental health, those that have legal mushroom businesses. I don't know the illegal ones. But anyway, we have the designers, those that are into charity work, nutrition, right now our nutrition for those that are in worship harvest, is really good. Yeah. yeah, it's really, really good for this season. <laughs> so just think about your business if you were to scale it to beyond where you currently are, to another country, to a different continent, what would it look like? I feel like School of Practical Business is here to open our minds to possibilities, to things that we probably haven't dreamt about. So welcome, have an open mind. If you haven't signed up, sign up. Uh, if you're planning to just test it maybe for one week or two, Make up your mind to stick and stay the course so that you can see transformation in your businesses, in your communities, in your families, with your employees, with those that you're going to employ. Otherwise, once again, welcome School of Practical Business 2024. Thank you, Pastor Fiona. Uh, first of all, we are very aware that business people on Friday, you have bills that are pending. So when you come to this class, we expect some joy. Yeah? We normally say, get your bills and leave them where? Outside. So when you come in here, you don't think about your landlord, your supplier, your, the taxman. We have a taxman here. So, Yeah. Ideas, you will get more ideas when you're joyful and you're free. Okay? So, let's be joyful. Let's be happy. Let's create some sense of liveness in the room. 
Amen? I'm going to ask the guy seated behind to please come and fill up all these empty seats in the front. There's one here, two here. You can fix a chair. There's, a, there's one here, actually. So come from the back bench. Hmm? If money was being distributed, you'd want to be the first. All right. That's better. So you are very welcome to School of Practical Business. Uh, this is our fourth class. It's our fourth class, and it's going to be the best. All right? So be very expectant uh, that what you're going to receive here is beautiful, and it's going to help you grow. Now, I know some of you are not students, all right? But I hope you leave. By the time you leave, you will be students. Those who have done School of Practical Business already, you can still sign up because this is a totally different year. All right? So, we are really here to solve problems. Your problems as a school. All right? But why are you here? Why are you here? That's a question you need to probably write down. Why are you here exactly? All right? Why are you here, what has brought you to this school? Maybe ask your neighbor, why are you really, really here? Do you want to get out of debt? Do you want to serve God? Do you want to enjoy? Why are you here? Check with your neighbor. And by the check with your neighbor, and I'm going to get maybe four responses. Why are you here? Have you got an answer from your neighbor? All right. Some responses. Where are people here? Your neighbor. To see the money. Yes. Anyone else? Uh huh. My, my neighbors say they want to see the money. To see the money. They are making it, but they can't see it. Yeah. My neighbor started the business as a hobby, accidentally made money. So now they want to make money. money. Yes, and the other one wants to stretch the business. Uh huh. Uh, my neighbor here, uh, he wants to build the supermarket into something monumental. That's why he's here. To build their business into something monumental. Your neighbor. Okay. Yes, sir. Where I'm here. I am here because I want to start the journey to being wealthy. To being, the journey to being very, very, wealthy. Very, very, very wealthy. Very, very, very wealthy. My neighbor has just started a business, so he wants to know how to get it off the ground. All right, to get their business off the ground. Okay, one more. Yeah, uh, my neighbor here started the first business. He didn't see the money. Started the second one, he didn't see the money. <laughs> so now he's thinking before he starts the third, <laughs> <laughs> he needs some skills. Ah. Okay. Oh my, okay, that's enough. It's interesting. At the end of the day, hmm? it's about the money. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's about the money. Even when you say I'm serving God, there is an element of money, you know? But how do you make the money? By solving customers' problems. So you're here to solve problems. 
at a larger scale. Yeah. So if you think about the money before the problems, you might not reach the money. So here to solve problems at a larger scale. And our business here is to make you ready, give you the tools you require to solve this business, because biz solve these problems, because business people solve problems at a profit. All right? Yeah. The only place you can multiply your money is business. There is no other place. Yeah, it's not there. Because in a business, you have the opportunity to invest and charge someone for your time and resources and knowledge and experiences. You take your money and put it in UAP. Is the is is common... Even them, they will look for a business person to give it to. They can multiply it for you. They stay with some and give you a Kalito portion and you celebrate. They need a what? A business person. So we are here to solve problems. When Harvest Institute started, Apostle, our vision bearer, who is going to teach us today, the aim was to raise strategic, skilled, and servant leaders. Because the realization was eminent that the problem is leadership. The problem is leadership, starting from self. Self-leadership, family leadership, organizational leadership, and so on. So that's the, the, the foundation of this uh, school, Harvest Institute. And it started by training leaders generally. And then we had two other schools, School of Ministry and School of Practical Business. And as you can imagine, School of Ministry was for ministers and School of Practical Business was for business people. Now, the problems around us are very evident. Yeah? The problems around us are evident. In a country like this, you find that the biggest chunk of problems that affect everyone are solved by governments. All right? Infrastructure is the biggest challenge you'll find in Africa. Infrastructure problems are mainly solved by government. People are not going to wake up and build a road because it's expensive. All right? So we need leaders in government. We need leaders in business. Like I said, business is the only place to multiply your money. But where does government get their money from? From taxes. It's the only place. So unless we grow strong, big, scalable businesses, our nations are going to remain in poverty. You will never have good roads, of course, assuming that the government leaders are also good. So we are playing our part. All right? So you'll find that unless we get to the point where government can raise enough taxes from you and me, we shall not get out of the situations in which we are. We are resourced immensely. We have the right, we have people, we have natural resources, we have markets, but there is something missing. Okay? You know the stories of the problems in Africa, in Uganda. We have mineral resources, we have uh, people, but we never get to actually enjoy these things. People come from wherever. They come, they go to Karamoja, and all these areas in your nations, they take the natural resources, go refine them, bring them back. We are here. Actually, they even send you aid, because a big chunk of Africa's budgets, or Uganda's budget, let me talk about Uganda, is from aid. So when are we going to stop begging? Are we together? Why don't we solve those problems locally? Are we together? 
So we have a big role to play. That's why we need to start thinking as we're going to learn. Stop thinking about your family. Until you stop thinking about you and your family and look at the bigger picture of this country, we will never leave the situation in which we are. We will get guys from out there, they come, set up businesses, and they take back the money. I'm not sure about the repatriation law these days, but they can take money. Is, it, are we, is there a restriction? There are ways around it. Unlike some countries where you can't take out uh, your profit. So guys come make money from you, from banks, from whatever, and they take. And you're here. Yet you have capacity, and we're going to learn that there's nothing you cannot do. Especially Christians, because we're a Christian foundation. We have a Christian foundation. So you can talk about the minerals in this continent. You can talk about the land we have. And the way we focus on agriculture, you know, agriculture cannot get us out of poverty. But everyone, agriculture, so, but I'm not saying agriculture is bad. I'm just giving an example. We need to scale agriculture. But we can't be focusing on agriculture. Because, like you will learn, it cannot get us out of poverty. So we have very many things around us that we need to do and that we can actually do. Okay? Lots of people don't have, still have, don't have access to, air, to electricity. Why? Because we can't build. Uh-huh. Can you? <laughs> Dan Stan's business is electrical power, so he's passionate about that. So and many other things. We still import food. Can you imagine? With all our agriculture, whatever, we still import a lot of food. How many of you have eaten maganja cereal? Maganja. Cereal. Like one, two, three. But it's not, is it your first choice? No. no. Is it a bad product? No. It's still imported. <laughs> imported wheat. Yeah, but they, they process it here. Hmm? So we still are still looking at everything out of this country. The brand, <laughs> yeah, you can do that. But you get my point. When are we going to solve our own problems? Because if I'm a charity, I will not care much because I'm not earning from it. But guess what? Business people, you can solve problems at a profit. You enjoy your money while solving problems. That's what the rest have done. Okay? So we have an opportunity. The continent is growing. That means there is a market, even in Uganda alone. The, by the fact that you have people, that's a already market. So market is not the problem, is it? No. There is something else. Market is not the problem. Resources are not the problem. And guess what? Money is not the problem. Yeah. There is money. You can, like you can walk out of here and find someone who is willing to give, money, to give you money. That's why we say, when you come here, I want to make you investor ready, because once you have a good vision and you're running your organization well, you can find someone to invest in you to realize your dream. Money is not the problem. It's me and you. It's our leadership. It's the way we think. It's the way we see. And we're here to solve that problem, to change that. So generally speaking, if we're ready to solve problems, we're in the right place. So we can start small, but we can grow big. Like, there's no big company here. I can, I can almost say in Uganda there's no big organization. There's no big business. It's big in our context, but we, have, we don't have serious businesses. Who thinks their business is big? <laughs> the GDP of Nigeria because some of the companies that we look up to or we buy products from they have very interesting turnovers okay 
Apple. All of you have Apple. Some people here are having Apple products. Who knows the turnover of Apple? They are on your turnover. <laughs> Director Grace, even you don't know. <laughs> Check. I also don't know. It just came out. Of, but I, I know where it is, but I don't know the exact figure. For last year. Three eighty five billion dollars. Yeah. What's the GDP of because annual revenue is the amount of business you do in a year. So in a in a like if you have to look at a nation, a nation you're looking at the, your GDP, the value of goods and services that you've traded. What's the one for Uganda? You know, in the, we are going to read about nations. We are going to read because you have to compare and, and see. I know the one of East Africa is about 200 something, uh, the whole of East Africa. Yeah. So you find an organization in Europe run by a CEO, has no army, has no mines, does not collect taxes, all they do is business. And they make more money than nations combined. I'm just trying to show you that we have no businesses. Are we together? Nigeria is one of the... Nigeria, Egypt, South Africa, they're in the 400s. And when you look at companies like... Uh, that Saudi company for oil, Aramco, or something like that, it's in 500s. Like the biggest nation... The biggest nation's GDP is still smaller than an organization. So when they come to you and tell you we want your oil wells, like you can't, you, you have no bargaining power. The best you can do is threaten them because you have an army. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but they also have superior probably. Are we together? I'm just trying to show you what you are against. Because you want to grow big business. But we need to think at that scale. And we're all on a journey. So, be thinking, what do you need to change? Walmart employs 2.2 million people. 2.2 million. Who knows the taxpayers of Uganda? So you find that the, the taxpayers of a nation, eh? taxpayers, you and me, are less than employees of a, of a company. Because that's your labor resource, if you ask me. About 20% of companies, I think about a year ago, 20% of Ugandan of companies registered at URSB were paying taxes. 20%. So, and some of them are here, those who are not paying. So it doesn't matter how little you, pay, you contribute. Okay? So we have a lot to do. A lot to do. So we have opportunities uh, around us that we can harness to get out of this pit. Remember, it's your responsibility. Every, year, every time you think it's government, think about how much tax you pay. Think about how many people you employ. All right? Because we are losing a lot of money because we are not strategic. We are not skilled. The servant thing is now, that one's a, a godly thing. Government recently, may, not recently, but a few years ago, started boo-boo. Hmm? Boo-boo, boo-boo. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't quite understand it until COVID. I realized, hey, boo-boo is actually important for us. We can't rely on... As a simple thing as toothpaste. No, for me, sanitizer was at my heart because I used to import sanitizer before COVID. You know? And like just being strategic to think that we can actually make it here without importing anything. So we keep, because we are not strategic, we keep importing phones, we keep importing name it bags. 
and many other things. Even services, you import services, software. Someone's doing software here. Yeah. You import software. Can you imagine? You know, every, if we are 10 people on this table, hmm? how many are we? Two, four, six, eight. Hmm? One of the things that keeps us in poverty is because we keep sending money out of this country. Yeah. It's a simple thing, but you don't realize it. Just that. So if, instead of importing this nice shoe, is this shoe made in Uganda? No. But there are guys who make shoes here. So instead of importing this shoe and keep the money in this circle, you build an economy. If that shoe is one million shillings, just by it circulating one million, I take my children to her school, instead of taking them to whatever, then I, you make clothes, detergents from... from. Mm -hmm. So we keep this one million shillings here, it goes round once, it's 8 million. It goes round twice. Uh huh. That's what builds economies. Yeah. The money circulating is just 1 million shillings. But it's building. If it goes round 20 times. Now, if it leaves this table and goes there to Europe, it has left, its impact is gone. Yeah. Its impact is gone. One of the things that increase GDP or economies is service industry. Why? Because money circulates faster. Now, if you have no services, you have no manufacturing, I won't talk about agriculture. That, when that class comes, the facilitator will come and he will teach you. So, we are here to change that story, ladies and gentlemen. We are here to change that story. We believe that if we craft solutions as business people with the wisdom that we have, especially with the godly foundation, and we are going to see how God plays a picture in all this. We are going to see it's very, very, I mean, Apostle always says that with the way those companies and, organ and, and countries operate, the strength of their economies we just need God. Yeah. Like, you can't compete. Yeah. Like, how do you compete with Apple? Even if you decided to assemble phones, both in quality, how? But we are going to learn how. All right? So we are here to change the story. So our value proposition for you is that we will do our best to make you investor ready and scalable. Because once you start having a good vision, you realize, hey, I don't have resources to move my business to the next level. That's what we are here to do. So this year, fortunately, we are using, as we've always done, but uh, the emphasis, we've been given the opportunity as Business Leaders Network. Business Leaders Network is a community of business people at Worship Harvest. And as much as the school is under Harvest Institute, We've been given the opportunity to run it. Uh, that way you get more resources of business people. It's more intense, and we're going to learn a lot more. All right. So what are we going to see? What are we going to see? We are going to have an, a, a practical experience. As business people, we're going to have a practical experience. What does that mean? As much as you'll have classroom teaching, a lot is going, to be da is going to be about what you do when you're out of here. You're going to have specific deliverables that you're going to achieve when you leave the school. One in, in, in last year, the hardest deliverable was creating a board. Okay. A board. How many of us have boards? Yeah. A, a functioning board. Okay. So things like that. And you know what? We will not come and tell you how to do it. You're the leader. We'll expect 
a deliverable and many others all right there's one we sneaked in last year courtesy of director here a will you don't have a will yeah because you see when you use business, practical business we realize this thing disturbs every business person so you you okay you won't show us but you you will show us at least page one. You know that this is my will. It has been signed, or it, I'm putting it here, and there are, other, there, are, there are ways to handle wills. So I'm going to be very practical. You're going to document all your procedures, and you'll have the manuals. You're going to be tax compliant. Now people are smiling. <laughs> yes, you're going to be tax compliant. Tax compliant doesn't mean you've paid all your taxes. We believe, we hope you pay all your taxes. But URM must know you and you must have a relationship. Because that will save you. When you, you see, when you become bigger, you'll always have a tax issue. Yeah, yeah you, it will always be there. So better learn how to deal with these people. Okay? What else? Is our list out? Maybe they project it for me. You're going to value your businesses. You're going to do market research. You're going to tell us how you source your suppliers. You're going to be very practical. It's not, it's not about talking. One of the things we do less is write synopsis. If you had been in school of leadership, you would have celebrated. But a synopsis, you are going to read so many books, by the way. I'm not saying you, you read so many books, you will discuss the books. But for us, our, pract our deliverable is not a synopsis. No. It's money. And you're going to tell us how much money you made last year, and we're going to make sure it's us. You're going to set targets that it grows. So we're going to be very, very practical. And many other things. So I believe that you're ready for this journey. I believe that you're committed now, you also realize that for you to succeed, you're going to work with people, especially in your organization. So if you're running your business alone, you, you probably have to employ people. I'm preparing you for the journey. Yeah? Because if you're not an accountant and we ask you for your finance money, you're not going to... So be ready to employ people. Be ready to increase your income. Be ready to... Register with your industry if you require any kind of registration to operate your business and many other things. So as I close, I would like to take this opportunity to introduce to you some of the, our coaches. I hope they're all here. Yes, they're all here. Our coaches, please stand up. That's Director Grace, Pastor Sharon... Dr. Steve and uh, Elder Claire. So we've been working with some of these coaches and you will have groups where you will interface with them all the time. They will guide you. Where they can't guide you, they will have someone to recommend. Uh, they will recommend someone to guide you. They will, their biggest job is going to ensure that you deliver your practicals. That's their biggest job. Don't give them headaches when they call for a meeting. Please appear. When they ask you for any information, deliver it to them. Because that's how you'll succeed. All right? So they are all uh, seasoned business people. They've done the class before. They know what you're going through. They have answers for you. Okay? They have answers for you. But most of all, work with each other. Our students have found value in working together. Peer-to-peer -peer learning, asking questions. Because, you, by the way, the fact that we are teaching you doesn't mean you don't know. Or doesn't mean that we know everything. Okay? So we also learn as we teach. So you find that in your groups, you also learn from each other. Probably you learn from each other more than you learn from the facilitators, especially because you're all practicing. Okay? So keep your mind open to that fact.
So ask yourself, how far are you willing to go? And get ready for the journey. Okay? Get ready for the journey. Now, I, we got some of your expectations. And looks like they are fulfillable. Okay? Looks like they are fulfillable. If there is anything you require out of what is on your deliverable, please ask. It could be an industry-specific requirement. Please ask. We will not fail to get you an answer. We have lots of resources that we can reach out to. Okay? As School of Practical Business, we have also some expectations. We have some expect. Pastor Anna, do you have my list? You sent it to me. Okay. Can I tell you expectation number one? That one is, on, is off my head. I tell you? Let me first see if it is number one on Pastor Anna's list. So the first one is that you must have an expectation. Okay? Don't just come to class. Like, like you should, every class you come to, for example, if it's a class about vision, have some questions. Do some research. Hmm? about the particular topic, such that you can come and we hear from each other. The more questions you ask, the more you learn, and the more we all learn. So have an expectation. Commit to the journey. Manage your resources well. Manage your time well. You should keep time. We, d I d we don't expect you to tell us uh, like certain 20 minutes to the class, or when the class is in 20 minutes that, you know what, I cannot make it to class. Lead yourself. Are we together? Lead yourself. Manage your money. You have to pay us. That one, I will... <laughs> I'm coming to Director Grace because it's a stickler for payments. Manage your money and pay us on time. Okay? We pay your facilitators... Okay, not we like we give them honorarium because we don't pay them. They are they are all volunteers, but we support them. Okay, we hire out this place, we buy things, so we have costs to your facilitation. So when you don't pay us, think about your client who is not paying you, and how you feel. Okay. Be accountable to your coaches. Remember, what's the key identifier of a coach? Coaches don't do assignments. Like, coach, help me with this thing. My other books of accounts. Oh, help me with my strategy. They can help you, but they can't do it for you. They can guide you. The coaches must important job is to ask you the right question. To ask you the right question, which will lead to the right action. Okay, so be accountable to them. Avail yourself. Now, don't let your coach look for you. Don't let your coach... All these coaches are busy people. They run businesses. So they're not going... You, you won't wake up and say, my coach didn't call me. As much as they set aside time to meet you, that's scheduled, don't, you, you, they're available to you. Take them out for coffee, a meal, invite them to your business, visit their businesses. Are we together? They are your coach. You're not the, <laughs> you're not the coach. Communicate to them. Communicate excellently. Be in touch with them. You're responsible for the change and you're responsible for the change in your business. So take responsibility for your business. All right. Great. Any questions so far?
Any questions? I'm going to invite the coaches over. Coaches. I didn't want them, but let, let them come. They're all going to tell us what they do. And one thing they want, they want, they want you to hear. After that, you, if you have any question, we're going to answer it after they speak to you. Okay? So prepare any question for us as a school. Ladies first. Ladies first. I'm a gentleman. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Claire Ruweza. I attend Worship Harvest Makere, and I'm an elder in Worship Harvest Ministries together with my husband, Daniel Ruweza. It's an honor and a privilege to be here this afternoon. I was at the School of Practical Business about two years ago, so I was where you are. And yeah. Um, what do I do? I'm an architect uh, by training and practice, um, but I run two businesses. Uh, one that is called Matter Concepts and Properties, which is a real estate firm. It's been in operation since 2020, so it's now going into four years. I also run a consulting firm that does architecture, engineering, surveying work. We do design and supervision of construction projects, and we are five years old. Yeah, so those are the two businesses that I've started. Um, both businesses I started with other people, so I'm a co-director. One has five directors, one has four. Um, I don't know what else is that. Uh, what would I like you to know? Systems are very, very important. From day one, operate like you would want to when you are a billion company. That is what is going to help you get there faster than anything else. Yeah. All right. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Some energy. You might doze off if you continue to answer like that. My name is Sharon Tumusime, and I am a pastor with Worship Harvest Nakawa. I'm a Zono pastor there. Uh, that's what I do most of the time. But while I'm not doing that, I run a business. It's a furniture-making business. It is located in Mark, India. It's called Palit, and uh, we create beautiful spaces. That's what I do, uh, among other things. Uh, what else did we talk about? How long I've been in business? Uh, I think I've been in business since forever. Yeah, I was always the people with a side hustle at the office. So I've been in business for a really, really long time. And um, I went to School of Practical Business about two years ago, and I have the honor, the privilege, the opportunity to be a coach. Last year we, I was a coach, and this year as well. And um, what else? What else? Uh, welcome to School of Practical Business 2024. What I would encourage you, Pastor Chris has said most of it, just commit to finish. When I showed up at the School of Practical Business, I told my business, this is your last chance. Yeah, this is your last chance. If you don't work this year, I'm leaving. And then I found out, yeah, it was my fault that it was where it was. So really... <laughs> I was threatening it, and yet it was all about me. But anyway, stick to it, and I can say that my business has grown, and it has changed tremendously as a result of the school of practical business. And uh, so please decide today that in December, you will still be part of the school of practical business. So begin with the end in mind. And uh, it's possible we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. So we'll be able to ship have this downtown. Um, I am the chief visionary officer hmm? Hmm? at Cod Clinic. Cod Clinic is a dental practice on Kia Road for the last 11 years. Yeah, uh, I, I was in the pioneer class of the School of Practical Business and I was a coach from the beginning. Uh, what I can tell you about the school is um, the law of environment. 
Yeah. Uh, don't strive to keep away from the school. <laughs> uh, if you think you can't afford, you can afford if you do what we tell you to do. Uh, because it will be very profitable. Yeah. Uh, if you don't do it, then you can't afford. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think that's what I have to say, Pastor Chris. Back to you. Hello. Is this thing on? Hi. Hi. How are you? Fine. Good. Yeah. Um, how many of you how many of you are we meeting for the first time today? Aha. Uh -huh. You see? Welcome. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, Grace Munira, my name. Do they say my name's my name? My name. Hey. Okay. It depends. <laughs> No. Okay. I am I'm a businessman and have been uh, a businessman for a very long time. I founded a company called Vine Pharmaceuticals. Um, it, you've seen it somewhere around. around yeah, it's still working. So, uh, <laughs> so I teach. I teach. Um, as part of the faculty here. So we'll interact. And so I'll share with you what I've done, what I'm doing, and what I want to do. So um, it's more like I teach what I'm going through and um, the experiences I've had. The one thing I can share at this point, um, business is good. And business is very exciting. But business money is not your money. Okay. So you can say preach it, preach it, preach it. <laughs> so in fact, I, I am more, this, this, this class, you're lucky to have Pastor Chris. <laughs> because I was, I was suggesting to him to be a little bit more invasive. That means after you've said, preach it, preach it, preach it, let's see the numbers. Okay? So you say, oh, I have systems and what, and la, 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 la. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, let's see. The bank statement. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we bring the fear of God into your life. <laughs> Be good. So, uh, yeah. If if He allows me, I will take it upon myself to be that invasive. Previously, what has happened has been that, um, yeah, we believe you are all banking. Yes. We believe you bank, you don't spend at source. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Uh, your bank balance is growing daily. I'll be there. <laughs> so, after you've been there, <laughs> I will ask you to bring me a bank balance. And it's amazing, because I do coaching as well. When you ask someone, Give me your bank statement. Say, you know, the internet is off. <laughs> you know, I, ne I need another thing to read. They're like, hey, but, uh, but uh, why is it now getting a little bit complicated? So what is the, the, the aim? The aim is, at the end of it all, business is behavior. So you just have bad manners. Okay? Which need to be fixed. Those bad manners need to be fixed. Yeah. <laughs> You're eating the money, eating everything. You're not paying people. You're not picking your phone. Those are bad 
manners. Yes. In fact, you're the biggest expense. Yeah. So, how do we fix all that? Thank you so much. Ah, he has started. All right, take your seats. Thank you so much. So I'll allow questions. Any area that's not clear to you. Uh, we're going to make a communication, uh, Pastor Anne, about one or two things that are not in that list. One is a trip, which is mandatory. It's a test of your, whether you have the money also. We have to make a trip, a business trip out of this country so that you can get exposed. All right. The other one is about profit, I think. Was it profit? Yeah. We have to actually see you profitable. Yeah, because if you're not profitable, you cannot scale. Yeah. If you're not profitable, you cannot scale. Then why scale? You're scaling problems. Okay. So we'll track that and show us. And many other things that, that, that you'll see. So I'm welcoming questions right now. We're here to answer your questions in the next 10 minutes. We take a break, then the apostle will come and teach us. Thank you so much. Uh, just a quick inquiry. Is there a room for someone who absolutely has no business at all? Zero. Is there room for grace um, for someone to grow through it in this school? Absolutely nothing on ground. Do you need grace? <laughs> no. Otherwise, uh, the experience we've had is you'll be reflecting a lot, so it won't help you much. Uh, you must have a business. You could have had a business that closed or that's not doing well, yeah, but if you don't have a business... You can come and see if you pay your money for nothing. Yeah. Even the conversations will not make sense. Like when they ask you for registration, profit and loss, it's going to be a hard a tall order for you. It's only one year, remember. Yeah. So you must have a business. Yes. Thank you. Um, my question is if you are you allowed to be here if you're part of the management team <coughs> of the business? But you're not the final man, like, it's not your final decision maker, but you're part of the management team and the ownership team of the business. Yes, you are. As long as you commit to do the deliverables. What happens is that a business person can send their apprentice, but then they can't open up to some things. Yeah. So if, if the business owner can open up and let you deliver... Uh, the course, the requirements, then you're welcome. Yeah. Thank you. You stated that uh, School of Practical Business is under Harvest Institute, but it is run under BLN. Do you mind speaking more into what BLN is and how it operates? All right. Good. So BLN is the community of business people at Worship Harvest. We have a community. Uh, we had to register it last year. So what we really do is we'll do life together. And we're improving that journey. So as a ministry, we found that we have lots of business people who need to be resourced. All right? In different ways. So because over the years, we've had an informal uh, relationship, interaction, where you come in a space like this, learn, and go away. Uh, you go to business garage, you learn. There has not been a real community. So we've decided to create a community. And later this year, you're going to learn that we've even introduced things like membership. All right? Now, that community's focus is going to be 
or what our big hairy audacious goal is is to raise 1000 business people who each can turn over a billion shillings or if you've scaled that a million US dollars okay so that's our big hairy audacious goal so we're a community we're going to start membership the community is there informally it's on a whatsapp group but uh, maybe by end of Feb we'll have formalized membership and people can join and then commit to that journey creating the community is about committing to the journey of growth and excellence in whatever you do and then we can do many other things if we imagine if that community of 1,000 business people which is not going to happen today or tomorrow maybe in five six years or less if we're a community of 1,000 business people and that money that you make is in the same community you will have a huge economy of over a trillion shillings then you can start to influence you can start to actually now start doing things you can influence government you can do lots of things that's what BLN is really about we're a community of business people who are committed to growth and our target now is a billion shillings yeah so those, for those who have scaled a billion, it's a million dollars. So we're a community who are committed to growth. So we have three key strategic anchors. The first one is creating the community. And we're going to handle that by creating membership. We know each other. We fellowship together in business, in ministry. We uh, create trust so that we can share business. The second one is what we've called coaching. Coaching is really training. We're just using the acronym. We're using, the, uh, we're using C, but in coaching, we're talking about training you, uh, coaching you. So we've, we've done that for many years already. We have BLN calls every day, every morning. We have business garage where we teach people. We have school of practical business. We have be your own boss. So the coaching aspect has been there. As we speak, maybe SOPB is the formal coaching space, but you realize when we go into membership, we will create other coaching spaces. Right? Then the third one is capital. Because we know that for you to scale, you will need money. You will need someone to invest in you. You will need someone to give you money. Or even you might have your money and you want to invest in other business. So that space is there. We have not focused on it yet because we've just started the journey. So we'll focus on it when we are ready. But we believe the system is already there in HMC, and we are talking to them to see how they can facilitate that aspect. So have I answered you? So we're handed this school to teach because we have so many business people. Because what we do here, we don't bring you lecturers. No, we bring you business people. Yeah, I don't think we've had a lecturer come to teach. We bring you practical business people who have excelled in the thing they are teaching. So we don't bring moves. Uh, Pastor Fiona, sorry, but we don't bring <laughs> MOOBS lecturers because we are about the practice, not the theory, but the practice. No matter the degree you have, you show us the money. Show us the problems you're solving. Show us the impact you're creating. So that's why Apostle allowed us to take it up strategically because we have lots of resources. We know where the pains are. We are all suffering in one way. We are winning in another. So that's the foundation of, of, of that. Uh, I always start my questions with an example for you to understand them better. Assuming you commit a crime and you need a lawyer to help you, the first thing you need to do is tell the lawyer that you know what, I actually did the crime. But we are going to tell everyone else that we didn't do it. <laughs> so my question is, here in business, uh, School of Practical Business, the bad manners uh, are, that we have been talked about, some of them are our weaknesses, they are our undercover things, eh? And uh, there are also maybe things to do with, uh, let's say, 
private processes that you think are your hacks, that it's your secret to no success. Uh, <laughs> there are some people who have founders who don't want to be revealed, but in order for us maybe to learn very well from here, I would imagine that there will be a moment of truth whereby I have to speak these things. So how do you deal with such things uh, when you're training? I hope my question is clear. It's not clear. <laughs> Am I the one to deal with it or you? It's you. <laughs> Confidentiality. Huh? Confidentiality, yeah? Ah. Okay, so that, that issue came up. We don't, we've not yet signed. If you feel like there's an issue you want us not to disclose, we can sign. The coaches can sign, especially the coaches, because they're the ones you're giving the information. Uh, also, what I've learned is as you grow, aside from not spilling your secrets, you have to, you're going to find that, maybe that's the solution, confidentiality. You're going to find that you have to be an open book to a certain extent. If it's not a formula, like your... your, your, your yeah, what they call a recipe, you know? But even the recipe, you can name it. Like, this is recipe A. I will not ask you what ingredients are there. But tell me there's a recipe A, and I see it packed there, labeled A, you know? So, as the, the, the more you grow, you realize that the things to hide reduce. <laughs> yeah, like your taxes. That tax thing, by the way, <clears throat> is to prepare you for growth. Like, you cannot hide from you, right? Yeah. You cannot, you can't. Yeah. And now it's even getting worse because the system is connected. You put an invoice here. So you're going to have to have a certain level of openness and start to deal with it. So then you can say, okay, this thing, confidentiality, you sign. It's okay, it's acceptable. So I don't know if I'm answering you or someone has a, bit, a wiser answer. Mm. One of my coaches once said to me that if it was such a secret and was so treasured, how come it isn't working? <laughs> and I remember f literally falling apart. But maybe that's an answer that could help. Let me handle it this way. I used to think that, you know, <clears throat> sometimes you're told in church, for instance, that um, don't tell anyone how much you've given. Right? It's between you and God. And for a long time, I rode that uh, car. But then, I realized you cannot do big things anonymously. Okay. So if I say, if I say I'm going to build this building for the church, I can't do it anonymously. There's a point of thinking where you come out. You can't think about big things anonymously and remain in the background. If you think small, you can remain anonymous. For instance, you can give, if the church basket passed by, you can give a million shillings anonymously. But you can't give a hundred million shillings anonymously. <laughs> See, there, there, there is no way. Uh -huh. <laughs> you see, there is no way I can sign a check anonymously. There is no way I can send a transfer anonymously. So you realize you can give 10K anonymously, yes. <laughs> and you can slip it in and no one will? No. 
But when we talk about... <laughs> yeah, it's between you and God. But, but, you see, there are even cases where you can make a transfer to someone and they need to do a, a check. Who is this person? How come they are moving this amount of money? Do, yes. So even if you wired a certain amount of money to the church, they'll ask the church why, and you have to be known. Number two, there is nothing new under the sun. <laughs> even the, the thing that you think is so secret that you, 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 you are the one. No, you are not. <laughs> there are so many. Th uh, let me ask you. If you think you have something new, go to Google. Have you ever asked Google a question and it wasn't there? There is always an answer. You realize someone has already asked that question. Even when you think, I'm going to shock Google today. Okay? It has an answer. So, be comfortable that there is nothing new. Even if you say, for instance, I want us to sign an NDA, an undisclosure agreement. You say, I have a formula. I have a formula. And so, before we talk about it, first sign. An NDA is useless in many cases. Because you cannot prove that I didn't have the same idea. <laughs> and the goodness of an idea is not really that you thought about it. I find people who say, I have an idea. By the way, today I go, you see, for me, I get so many ideas. That's just to be human. To have several ideas is, not, is nothing exceptional. You're not gifted to have many ideas. You know, yesterday I was thinking about uh, for a forest bureau. Eh? A forest bureau would work well here in Naria. Then the other day I was thinking about a bakery. You're not exceptional. You're just a good dreamer. Yeah, you're just a normal human being. It is in the execution of the idea. Secondly, I don't know, third, how, how, first Chris, you, shot, you stopped me. Eh? You see, there are so many things you can't do alone. And so as soon as you begin forming a team, then you will need more than you. So you have to share with them how you do business. Let me explain to something very simple. There is responsibility. There is accountability. Then there are privileges. Who is the responsible person? Who is the person accountable? And who has the privileges? In many cases, because you're the business owner, all right, you're the person who is responsible. But what does responsibility actually mean? That means you're the person who has the ability to respond. You get it? You see, in your business, you're the person who is responsible. When you conceive, they ask you who is responsible. Because you do not, we expect someone to be responsible. That means he has the ability to respond. 
If we say, hey, hey, something has happened here, some guy must show up. You cannot expect all of us to panic. <laughs> the way he should panic. In fact, when we are panicking more than he is, then we say he is irresponsible. You understand? Yes. yes. He has the ability you to respond. Or at least when you're looking for someone, get someone who has the ability to respond. Yeah. Yes. Now, then you get someone who is accountable. So, you can delegate a responsibility. But you as a business owner, you remain accountable. What is accountability? The ability to count. Why do you complicate things? It's the ability to count. How can you say you are accountable when you don't know yourselves? Are yourselves accountable? Yes. Who is accountable? You. You delegated a responsibility. Someone does something on your behalf, but you remain accountable. In other words, you cannot therefore say, I gave this person the path. And I'm also shocked. I'm also disappointed. <laughs> you know, my staff eh, are very disappointing. Who hired them? You did. So who is accountable? Uh -huh. So I never want to hear anyone complain about their staff. Because they are accountable. And as I wind up, who has the privileges? The person with the accountability. The person with the responsibility doesn't have entitlement to privileges. So you as the owner of the business, you know you are accountable. And you are responsible. And so you give responsibility to whoever you want. And you remove that responsibility from whoever you choose. Because you enjoy the privileges. Now, you don't start enjoying the privileges if you don't want to be held. And if you don't want to have. So we do not start from the privileges. Saying, what am I entitled to? If there is no profit and so you have nothing to count, then there is no privilege. Not so. Uh -huh. <laughs> not so. Hey, we don't start by taking away the money. We first make the money. Then we count it. Uh -huh. Then the privileges. Yeah. Thank you, Director. Always having something to teach. Yeah. All right. So, guys, we're going to take... I hope that was the last question, was it? Okay, one more. We take a break. It's going to be like a two-minute break. Then at three, we should be seated and we start immediately. Uh, thank you, Chris. Pastor Chris. Uh, you keep mentioning this word scalability, scalable. Um, I just want to understand it in simple English. You know, how does it refer to what is happening I was going to invite Dr. Director Grace to come back. <laughs> just one, one minute. Because the best person would have explained. I have studied scalability, and I teach scalability. There's a difference between growth and scaling. Many of you misuse the word scaling. You're not scaling if you're not profitable. <laughs> if... <laughs> You, you see, you, if you have one unit of a shop, and let's say that you spend 
one million shillings on advertising, okay, and you're profitable, then you can think about scaling. If you're simply duplicating your inefficiencies, that is more of ego and something else. You grow by having, okay. It is not brilliance to start many businesses that are not making money. Yeah. And that's the whole science behind scaling. It, scaling should be in such a way that the more you expand, the more profitable you become. And therefore you're getting economies of scale and becoming more efficient. For instance, if you spend a million shillings on advertising, so that means that on your P&L, you have an expense of one million shillings. But if you have 10, that means that is 100,000. So that is what scaling means. That your cost per unit drops with increase in units established. And therefore, your profitability increases. If for every increase in business that you have, you're making more losses, young man, young lady, baby, whatever they call you. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Scale back. You're not scaling. You're doing self-destruction. Yeah. It should be that for every incremental unit, it becomes better. You're having network effect. And you're not scalable if you do not have three elements. We'll cover them later. Awesome. Thanks, Director. All right, let's take a break now. I'm giving you exactly three minutes. Huh? At two minutes to three, be seated. So don't go far because we are going to start at exactly three.
All right, is your neighbor back? Your neighbor is not here. All right. So we're waiting for Apostle Moses is is on his way. But as we wait, I'll take any other question that's pending. So when he comes, he starts right away. Any other question? Any area that's not clear to you? Yes. Thank you. Uh, the books that were sent, or the reading material that was sent on the prospectus, do we buy all of them online or there are some that are sold here at church? The books. You want to know? You want to buy? So, you're going to find those books yourself. Yeah, this class has started. You're going to find those books yourself. You're a business person. Look for the book. Yeah. They scribed. There is Everand. It's no longer scribed. Eh? Everand. Yeah. There is Everand, it's an online bookstore. There is Amazon, there is a restock. We have a library down here, uh, the next floor. So, find the book. Find the books, find the books. Also, ask on the groups, where can I find this book? People can help you. It's not wise to share PDF copies of books. Actually, sh you, you do not share PDFs. Buy the book either online or find a physical copy. Okay? Or borrow from someone. Or borrow from someone. Is that okay? Any other question? You're set. All right. If I came as a visitor but would like to sign up for the class, what is required of me? Oh, check. If you came as a visitor, how many want to sign up that came as a visitor? <laughs> when I say visitor, why did the hand go up? All right, we have one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Uh, Pastor Dunstan, right there, will give you a consent form that you'll sign up, that you'll use to sign up. All right? And. Uh, he will tell you what to do next. I've asked him to do so because he's an always able, available helper here. But the person responsible is Pastor Anna. Oh. <laughs> all right. Uh, so, yes, Pastor Dan Stan will help you, all right? So, without wasting much time, we, yeah, without wasting much time, I would like you to stand up and we welcome our facilitator today. Now, he's also the vision bearer of Harvest Institute. He's the vision bearer of School of Practical Business. The things I told you about where I want to go are all from him. I don't generate anything. I learned, all right? And he has a love for business people. 
So I want us to put our hands together for Apostle. <laughs> for all these years, has made sure business people learn in church. So, Apostle, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Over to you, sir. Please have your seats. Welcome to School of Practical Business. Thank you, Pastor Chris, for the opportunity to be in the first class. Hey, what a blessing. Billionaires everywhere. Now, if you don't believe that, you're in the wrong place. Yeah. What a shock. Like, you want little money, then you come to School of Practical Business. What are we going to do for you? So this is a place of people who have long cast off the religious spirit that tells you that poverty and holiness are synonymous. Because, behold, I show you mystery. They are not. <laughs> poverty is poverty. Holiness is holiness. And the two have nothing to do with each other. So, hey, that's good to see you. All the way from Worship of Subudo. Hey! I have many friends in the room. If I start mentioning one by one, that will be all I do this afternoon. But all the uh, mighty men and women of God, I greet you. And all the serious business people, I greet you. You greet me too. Well, I don't know what Pastor Chris told you. Uh, he may have oversold. <laughs> so, uh, but I'm not worried about a thing. So this is our first class, and I think you call this foundations, something like that. Is it? Foundations and vision. So because we are Christians, at least here in School of Practical Business, we don't only minister to Christians, but we are, our convictions come from our relationship with Christ. It means that everything we do pretty much is informed by the Bible. And the Bible is also a very powerful business book. If you use it well for purposes of business. So since it's Foundations class, allow me just use the Bible today. But it will be a blessing to you. First of all, uh, today I'm going to focus on the people they call the patriarchs or the patriarchs. <laughs> it varies from region to region. So who are the patriarchs? Those men of old, God's covenant men that talked with him, walked with him, knew him, Related with him long before there was a church, long before there was a temple, long before there was a, a, a what is this thing called? A, a tabernacle, long before there was organized religion, these men knew God and they walked with God. They had a covenant with God. And so we have so much to learn from them because our faith is built on them. So those are men like Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the patriarchs, and their children, the sons of Jacob, who are the 12 tribes of Israel. Amen. Amen. So for those who are Christians, the Bible says in Galatians 3, 29, that if you are Christ's, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. You can give us the NLT as well so that we have even more. Uh -huh. And now that you belong to Christ, we can read together since we are in SOPB. You are the true children of Abraham. You are his heirs and God's promise to Abraham belongs to you. He's called the father of faith. Matthew 1.1, 1, 1, the first verse in the New Testament says this is the book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. So there is something about this Abraham fellow that we all need to know. And those who immediately came after I mean, This morning I was reading my Bible and I reached the part where Abraham died and was buried. 
And uh, not Abraham. Who's this other guy? Isaac. And the Bible says his sons buried him. That's Esau and Jacob. And he died at 180 years. Yeah. Of the patriarchs, he's the one who lived the longest. I mean, after all the kafafo of people living 900 years and sitting exceedingly until God is like, I've had it. 120 and you're out. Yeah. But these people didn't hear the 120. So Abraham first pushed 175. <laughs> uh, Isaac pushed 180. Then when they asked Jacob, he said, the years of your servant have been few. Uh, the few and evil they, have they been when talking to Pharaoh. Why were they few and evil? Because there were only 130 at that time. But anyway, it was nice to see how these guys by time. So, it, so Isaac got a wife. He was a late starter. So he got a wife at 40. Or rather, they got him a wife. He couldn't even get the wife. Uh, let you know whoever is doing the sound. Could I have some monitor? I feel like I'm hearing the bounce of the walls than where I am. So, 40. Now, as the issues were with the people there, they also struggled to, to conceive, to have children. So, eventually, Rebecca gives birth when he is 60. Uh, that's enough now, it's clear. 60. Can you imagine? 60. Yeah. Twins. This one, Jacob. And I don't remember that he ever added. I think it was like, this is more than enough. <laughs> but then he died at 180. That means his children buried him when they were 120. Now, Abraham had Isaac, when he was 100, that means Isaac was with his, with his dad for 75 years. So by the time they are sending the servant to go get him a wife, that's Abraham is 140. So the wife, Rebecca, experienced Abraham for another 35 years and the grandchildren for 15 years. You're tracking. Yeah. Then he died. Now, Isaac keeps stretching, stretching, stretching. So now there's that blessing problem where this guy stole the blessing. Then the brother I'm going, says, I'm going to kill you. Yeah. So he runs, they send him to the uncle's place to his mom's brother who completely tries to rip him off for about 20 years. But because he was a tither, he could not be outwitted. So then he comes back very wealthy but he can't go back to back home because a brother had promised to kill him. Then he has a brother is coming with 400 men but he was wise. He had sent several gifts ahead. A man's gift makes room for him and brings him before great people. So uh, those gifts, somehow, they, when they meet, they weep, they hug. So instead of going home, he goes to a place called, where was that? Uh, Shechem is where he ended up, but there was one where he went first, built a house, then he went to Shechem. Then he was there, there was that chaos of the, when they raped the sister, then these guys went and killed all the men, having told them to circumcise. Then he knows things are bad. So God appears to him again. He says, go back where I first appeared to you in Bethel. So he goes there. And that's where he was. When the, when the father died. Now all those years he had never gone back to see the father. From when he left with a stick. To when he comes to bury him. But he was 120 years by that age. Anyway, why am I boring you? Business foundations from the patriarchs. <laughs> Business foundations from the patriarchs, I'm going to quickly share maybe, depending on what time allows, but I have here about 14 points. And you, you can, there are two ways to listen to this. Usually when I'm listening to either a message or a teaching, or when I'm reading a book, 
So there are two ways. You can read it for knowledge, where you can also engage in a conversation. Say, did you know that, uh, you know, when these boys were burying their father, they were 120? And they go, hey, wow, how did you know that? <laughs> I can't tell you, but if I told you, I have to shoot you. But I just know I know. So you can either take in like that, or you can read yourself into the text, into the teaching, and say, mm-hmm. How am I going to immediately apply that in my life right now, in my business right now? And I can tell you, right now is the only way it works because I've observed so many people make promises to themselves and to others and to us and to their, what do you call them, your coaches. And three years later, where they were, when you first saw them in school of practical business, is where they still are. Why? They thought that they are cleverer than God. But as for you, you are wise. And I can tell you right now is the way to go. There is the law of diminishing intent from John Maxwell. The longer (laughs) you take to do the thing you know you ought to do, the harder it becomes for you to do it. So read yourself into these principles. The first one is the blessing. The blessing. The blessing. Genesis 12, 1 to 3. Now the Lord had said to Abraham, I will always give you the reference, then we'll talk. Get out of your country, from your family, from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. I'll bless those who bless you. I'll curse him who curses you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be Blessed, the blessing, the blessing. I don't have time to tell you about curses, but let me tell you about the blessing. If you're a person of faith, which you are, whether you know it or not, everyone needs it, just a matter of where you've put the faith. The blessing is the supreme, most important unseen but surely real thing in your life. Yeah. Yeah. Whether you believe it or not. It is the big differentiator between those who make it big and those who live a life of struggle. It's the blessing. You see this Abraham here is a nobody. He's just out there in some town which no one cares about serving foreign gods, and God says, okay, get up and go. And I'm going to do this one thing for you. I will bless you. He says, now watch what happens when I bless you. So, in chapter 17, later on, when Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said to him, I am almighty God, walk before me and be blamed. He says, I'll make my covenant between me and you, and will multiply you exceedingly. Yeah. And multiply you exceedingly. In verse 6, he says, I'll make you exceedingly fruitful. Hmm? And I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. This is a function of the blessing. I'll make you exceedingly fruitful. You know, I will not go through all the scriptures, but God repeats these same things to Isaac in Genesis 26, okay? When he says, um, okay, don't go to Egypt. He wanted to go to Egypt. He says, where in this land, I'll perform the oath which I saw to Abraham, your father. Verse 4, and I'll make your descendants multiply as the stars of heaven and will give your descendants all these land and in your, you all, and your seed all the nations shall be blessed. Why? Because Abraham obeyed my voice. So, so the man, he was very, very, very blessed. Look at Genesis still, chapter 26, verse 12. I'm just interesting you in the blessing, okay? And later you may ask Katife, you're talking to us about Abraham, Isaac, what they are blessed. I'm here, what am I going to do? Then Isaac thought, 
in that land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold. For who? And the Lord blessed him. Who, who, who blessed him? Not Satan. You see, superstitious people in Uganda and other countries think that the devil gives more money than God. So anyone who is making it, either they cut off their children's hair and overput it where they cut a goat, they went underwater, they are illuminated, they are whatever, every bad thing you can imagine, except they are people of God. Huh. And what does it say? And the man began to prosper. Why? Because of the blessing. Mm. I told you, you are in business, you don't want to prosper, you are just going to waste our time. Yeah, you'll be the one posting wrong things on the BLN group. And continued <laughs> prospering until he became very prosperous. Very prosperous. That's the impact of the blessing. And then it tells you, this is not just prosperity in the head. Yeah, next verse. For he had possessions of flocks, possessions and herds, Great number of employees. Great number of what? Employ Nowadays, you're not going to go to someone and say, serve me, whatever. No, you have to pay them a salary. Yeah. So how do we know you're prosperous? You have a great number of employees. And you have possessions. Two is not a great number. Three is not a great number. Five is not a great number. Ten is not a great number. Twenty is not a great number. Fifty is not a great number. Even 100 is not a great number. Read yourself in the text and start thinking, what do I need to adjust? What do I need to change to start fulfilling what the scripture says about me? Okay. I thought by now there would be sufficient excitement. I'm talking to you about the blessing. Now if, you are, if I start talking curses, is that when you'll start <laughs> getting excited? What a shock. The man was prospering while he was blessed. God repeats the same thing to Jacob in Genesis 28. He says in verse 3, may God Almighty, uh -uh. this is the father blessing him, may God Almighty bless you. We could as well go with the father's blessing. Isaac, may God Almighty bless you and make you fruitful and multiply you. How many times are you going to see fruitful and multiply with blessing? Every time. I will show you even the primary one. That you may be an assembly of peoples as a result of the blessing. And give you the blessing of Abraham to you and your descendants with you that you may inherit the land in which you are a stranger which God gave to Abraham. That's not in my notes, but I will talk about it. Jewish young Jewish boys are told to buy land from age seven. Because it's part of the blessing. There is nothing like you're blessed and you have no land. And I've been convincing business people to buy land and build properties for the last five years. They just look at me like they are in... in in, in uh, stuck in lights. They think, ah, my money can't go in brick and mortar, brick and mortar, evaluation, pivoting, you're wasting time. You're, you're not wiser than God. Yeah. God could have told Abraham all these blessing things minus land. Go and reread Every time he gives this blessing, the specific blessing that was repeated to Abraham twice and to Isaac and to Jacob, land is always there. Land is always there. Mm -mm. When he's giving him the land, it's not like two plots. <laughs> like, Hmm. So the blessing. What led to increase in the book of Genesis for Adam, Noah, Abraham, Christ? Was the blessing? The Bible says he blessed them. 
First of all, even the animals. If you look at Genesis 1.22, give us Genesis 1.22 and you see what God did to the animals and the other things. And God blessed them. These are the creatures saying, how, how do you know they are blessed? One, be fruitful, multiply, fill the waters in the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. That's a blessing. I'm about to start applying. I haven't just started applying. We are still reading the scripture. Then I'm going to start applying. Yeah, Solomon, are you ready? You are there being cool. Um, we are coming. <laughs> okay, look at verse 28. This is when he's speaking specifically to man. Then God blessed them. And God said to them, Be and multiply and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, birds of the air, over every living thing that moves on the earth. The ones that he blessed earlier, which are multiplying the fish, the birds. Now he blesses man so that he also can multiply so that he can have dominion over them. Because if you're multiplying the resources but not the people to use them, you're going to have an issue. That's why it's useless to think you're going to grow a big company without a big number of people. I'm starting to apply. And by the way, me, I'm the one with the microphone. So whether you like what I'm saying or not, I've been told you are here until 5 o'clock. So, yeah, you can quickly adjust and start liking what I'm saying. Hey! So a business that's not multiplying is not necessarily blessed. Okay, it's not working in the blessing. I told you I'm going to start applying. I've just thrown one application, then the people are gone quiet. Okay, let me go back to my notes. <clears throat> As of 2021, out of the 900 Nobel Prize recipients since 1901, that's for 120 years, when it was first awarded, more than 200 have been Jewish. 200 out of 99 coming from the most hated group of people on the planet. Yeah, like everyone who thinks they have power, they want to oppress Jews. They, they feel like you can't really feel powerful unless you're oppressing Jews. From Nebuchadnezzar up to today, anyone who thinks, wants to show that they are powerful wants to have a foot in Jerusalem and to oppress Jews and kill them. Yeah, that's what Hitler thought would make him great. And others like him who have been before him and who have come after him. Everyone. You will not find a more hated group of people. How did they end up with 200 Nobel Prizes out of 900 when they are only 0.2% of the population of the planet? You tell me, you who are statisticians and mathematicians and who do, you know, if A, if B. <laughs> A coefficient B. How? A factorial. Uh, uh, how do people who only 0.2% of the population, because right now they are about 12 million, of which only 6 million live in Israel. The rest are scattered abroad. How can people who only 0.2% of the population of the world get more than 20% of the Nobel Prizes? And no one was watching to say, stop it, these guys are over getting, no. And they are not even in their own home country. So they, not, they have nothing working for them. Yeah. Wherever they are, laws are uh, established against them. Look, Hitler killed six million Jews. Six million. That's half of the, all the existing ones today. He called it the final solution. He wanted to make sure Jews don't exist on earth. 
he was fighting God. That's why he didn't just kill the ones in Germany. He was conquering all these countries and he wanted to go to England, conquer it as well, and kill all the ones there, then attack America. That was the, event, the final frontier. Yeah. That's why he was very interested in Russia. Do you know why he was very interested in Russia? Because Russia had a lot of Jews. Two hundred Nobel Prizes. At the time, around twenty twenty one, when we are going going through these notes, of the top, world's top ten richest people, five were Jewish. Yeah, and about, I don't know whether the statistics have changed, but about five years ago, six years ago, they made up twenty five percent of all the billionaires in America. Twenty five percent and 11% of the world's billionaires were Jews. 11% and you are 0.2% and you are in oppressed status. Can you explain? Anyone can explain? It's like if you found that, if you went to Makere University and found that out of the 200 professors, I don't know whether there are 200 professors, Huh? 50 are from one village in uh, Iganga district. You have to go look. Is it the water? Is it, is it corruption? Is it the food? Is it the soil type? Is it the well? Is it witchcraft? What is it? Here is the thing. You, you will not be able to explain it naturally. Yeah. One of the things that God has reserved for himself to show the world that he exists in spite of their noise, how the atheists is the Jews. So you, you can't explain it. Yeah. You can't explain how the most oppressed group of people end up with the most money. Yeah. It's like God is proving a point. It's like kill them all you want. Attack them all you want. Conquer their country all you want. Deny them this, this all you want. But just to show you that the blessing is a supernatural thing whose effects you only get to see. It's like there. Do all you want. But they will end up being the richest, the wealthiest, the most innovative, and yeah, the most influential. It's the blessing. So, of course, you're saying, dude, cut you. Where, where are the rest of us? Now, the founders of Google are Jewish, the founder of Oracle is Jewish. Founder of Facebook is Jewish. Bloomberg, Jewish. Um, plus many, many, many others. And most of them you will never know because they keep a very low profile. Extremely. These ones, because of the size of what they lead, they can't hide. May also be one of the people who cannot hide because of the size of what you lead. Yeah. Amen. Look, you, you better believe it. Yeah. Why? Because you're also blessed. Look at uh, Galatians 3. I also I already showed you 3.29, which says if you are Christ, you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the yeah. promise. But look at 3. Is it 13.14? Christ, okay, here we go. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for it is written, curse is everyone who hangs on a tree. Why? that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus. Of the spirit through faith. If you are in Christ Jesus and you're Gentile, you're already operating under the blessing of Abraham. So, the only challenge for you is it is by faith. For them, it is natural. Whether they know it or not, it works. 
I think they don't, they don't even waste time to research it themselves. I say, why, why are we rich? Because fi fish doesn't know water. It just thinks this is my air until they throw you in there. Then you realize that is water. Am I helping someone? So you have to believe it. They don't have to believe it. They just have to be born with it. Yeah. It's in the blood. For us, it's in the blood of Christ. But it is by faith. You can be a Christian, tongue-talking, demon-chasing, heaven-bound, fire-spitting, church-attending, and I don't know whatever. 21-day fasting, street, street preaching, and you are completely broke because you do not believe the blessing of God, which according to Proverbs 10.22 makes one rich and adds no sorrow with it. So once you understand this, you realize things are already working in your favor. Amen. All you need to do is bring God into the picture and say, good, all along I didn't know you were there. Now where do we go from here? Grab this thing and let's go. I can tell you, it is very, very complicated to explain failure as a Christian. Yeah, it's very, very complicated to explain failure as a and I mean failure in general terms like success, failure. Yeah. Very complicated. Because it should not be possible. Because of the blessing. In twenty sixteen, the rate of divorce among born again Christians this is America was 33%, 19% in Catholics, 51% in nominal Protestants, 9% in Jews. Same country, same laws, same challenges, different outcomes. What is a deficiator? The blessing. It, it, got, it went even lower. It's now two. Ah, but friends, do you believe you are blessed? Ephesians 1, 3, blessed be the God and Father who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Now, we are blessed. And this is the supreme thing. The thing that separates you from all the strugglers out there is you are blessed. It is what separated uh, Isaac from the rest. That in the time of famine, he got a hundredfold of his investment. And he be prospered and he became very. Imagine yourself very prosperous. What does that really look like? For me as a pastor, as a church planter, very prosperous to me is 3,000 churches. 3,000 churches with 700 buildings. Yeah, that, that is prosperous for me. Choose your prosperous. As a business person. As a, as, a, a, a legal, as a legal consultant. As a, a nutrition, cleaning, company. Whatever it is. What is your prosperous? Let me give you a cue. Because you might... Shoot too low and say, if I have any pizza man and a room. <laughs> a wish. A wish. We have improved. 
Now, go to verse 15. Mm -mm. Th sorry, 14. Where we were at the position things. Okay. Look at the last sentence. One, two, read. So the Philistines envied him. Until that is happening. Until the non-believers. First, forget the petty in church uh, little, little hatred. You know, even among pastors, we have our own little, little pettiness. The other church is doing better. You start publishing nonsense about them. Yeah, but it's not the non-believers. It's until the non-believers come and say, where did these guys get all this money? Yeah. yeah that's when you know, oh, we are starting to prosper. Look, if they are not writing fake stories about you in the papers and whatever, you are not prospering. Let me just put it out to you to plainly. You are not. Yeah, keep working. Uh, yeah. Keep going. Yeah, I don't know all of you, but in here, I only know like one person who have seen things written about them in, in the papers. Yeah, and other places. Apart from me, there's only one other person I know. I told you we are going to apply. We are now applying. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> we go. We keep going. We yes, of course you're strong. <laughs> Who has talked about weakness here? <laughs> yeah, moreover. Hmm? So, brothers and sisters... You and I, we are shooting too low. We are shooting too low. You know, there are things that will never happen until you think about them. Yeah. You will not, there will never be a surprise. Hmm? Manuela. You will not be there at home sleeping, then you come and say, they work your, because what's your business called? Credo. Hey, hey, Zuka. Okay, what, what? Do you know uh, there's credo in South Africa? It's like, are you for real? Like, whose is it? No, yours! <laughs> like, ah! Uh, are you, are you, check me, I see. No, it's not going to happen like that. Be fruitful. The result of the blessing is be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth. Look, everyone, if you are in this class, whatever you're in charge of, if you don't have ambitions for global presence, you're wasting our time. You're in the wrong class. That you doze off, you even sleep off along the way because we are going to be speaking things for... You, where is your thing in Kenya? Where is your thing in, in Kigali, Rwanda? Okay, you say there are the laws are too many. Okay, Congo. The laws, there is no laws. Pallet. <laughs> 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 huh? huh? Guys! No one else is going to do this thing for us. Yeah, no one is coming. There's no help coming from America, wherever, China, nothing. Rather, they are coming to eat your cake and pop the bag. One time, I was talking to Bishop Doug. Say, I'll be, I'll be there. And telling him we're starting to have some uh -uh, challenges. Threats, security threats against churches. What? And, you know, very uncertain environment. And he told me, you know, 
those things happen. That's why you should be in many countries so that if there's a problem, yeah, you just operate somewhere else. I mean, you were saying it matter of factly, like, 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 what are you talking about? <laughs> like, like, I expect you to be, yeah, whatever happens, you can I just move over here and keep going with the ministry. So for you, your nice vision, what would happen if the environment became unfavorable? Where are you going to move? You want to be a refugee? <laughs> Pastor Chris, am I in the right class? Is there a vow of silence here? Like, like when things become hot, just say nothing. Just look, look, on, look at your pen, look up to the sky. Uh. Where, where will you go? Where will I go? You know, the blessing... Wow. Now, the, the, the Jesus told the disciples, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Acts 1, 8. And you shall be witnesses to me. This is a, he's scaling, he's giving them the scale of the ministry. Or the scale of the, this is business, scale of his enterprise. Jerusalem, Judea, Judea Samaria, ends of the earth. So, do you have a Jerusalem version of your business, of your enterprise? Are, are you a Christ follower? Yes. Have you received the Holy Spirit? Yes. Because this is for those who have received that. Okay, now you've received the Holy Spirit. Okay, yeah. Where is the Jerusalem version? You can show us. Jerusalem. Hmm? Yeah. Because where is your headquarters? Here, here is Naria, and Tinda is there. Don't confuse us. Uh huh. Kungu. Mbuya. Wanji? Kikum. Kikum. Mm hmm. That's her Jerusalem. Who else? Someone else who wants to share where yours is? Tinda. This table, yeah? <laughs> we are all in season 21. So don't, don't say it is the hunger. Uh-huh. Nalia. Luzira. Kampala. Hey. <laughs> yeah, there are places where Mnange. They don't know your other smaller village. They only know Kampala. Right now, the next question is going to be, where is the... Uh, but before we say Jerusalem, are you sure it's Jerusalem or a street in Jerusalem? <laughs> because Jerusalem assumes that if we walk out there and ask someone, because you know they say these are the men who have turned up, the world upside down and they've come here also. So in Jerusalem... The way the whole city gathered, it looks like if you went anywhere and asked them, have you heard about the Jesus people? They'll say, oh, the ones who are making noise over there. They say, we know them in the upper room. Then, now, how about you? If we go and they ask, what's the name of your business? City Lights. So we go, because he's saying Kampala, okay? We go to Kampala. <laughs> and, and ask... Uh, City Light, have you had a... What, what, do you think they will say, oh yeah, we know those guys. <laughs> then they pull out their phone and say, you mean this one, this logo, is, is this the company? Is this their product? Yeah. You know, you can be here and waste a whole year of Friday afternoons. But you must allow 
yourself to be challenged. Because everything else you're going to be taught will not make sense to you until you embrace that vision. They'll tell you to put in place systems, taxation, this, and you're like, why? I know everything is where I sit. I just stand like this. this uh, the product is here. Under my desk is the production line. These are the finances. Yeah. The bank is on the phone. It is, what are you talking about? <laughs> but we are, we are talking about you are seated somewhere. Business is going on 500 kilometers away. That's why you're here. And Apart from challenging you, I really want you to believe it. Because there are not going to be many people who will come and tell you to believe it, who will come and plant these ideas in your head. Yeah, For me, I, I was going to just be a pastor of one little church renting space in a restaurant in Lugogo. That was it. I thought, if this works and I die, I go to heaven, I, was, uh, be, I, I expect a well done, good and faithful saint <laughs> when I'm entering. And an entourage of angels. I, it, as it turned out, I was super wrong. Yeah. The blessing. Are we still together? The second, what do we call them? Yeah. Foundations from the patriarchs. So one, they were blessed. The good thing is if you're in Christ, you're already blessed. So you don't have to worry about it. But you have to be aware. And you have to operate as one who has a blessing. Two is prayer. Prayer. Now, there I could... Let me just give you maybe two, three verses that form a pattern and you'll see. So Genesis twelve seventeen, And the Lord appeared to Abraham and said, To your descendants I will give this land. And there he built an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. Mm. Genesis thirteen eighteen. Then Abraham moved his tent. This was after the Lord incident. And went and dwelt by the terrible trees of Mamre, which are in Hebron. This is after God had told him, you know, lift your eyes to the east, west, all the land that you see I will give to you. And says, so he moved his tent and then he built an altar there to the Lord. Are you seeing a pattern? Now, Isaac, Genesis 26, verse 24. And the Lord appeared to him the same night and said, I'm the God of your father Abraham. Do not fear I'm with you. I bless, multiply your descendants for my servant Abraham's sake. So he built an altar there and called the name of the Lord. Jacob, Genesis 28, when he had that dream, when God spoke to him the same things, he says, he rose early in the morning, verse 18, took the stone that he had put, as he said, and set it up as a pillar and poured oil on top of it, which was like an altar. So basically, these guys, every time God came and spoke to them something so preposterous, unbelievable, like, what? They built an altar to the Lord. Yeah. Every encounter they had, they built an altar. This is where people who had a relationship with God. They didn't have a pastor to go to and say, Musumba, what, what? I had this dream. What is the Lord saying? They didn't have prophets to go to. Man of God, what are you seeing? No. They walked with God. They built an altar. Now, the part I didn't tell you, by the way, why you should be interested in all of this is that Abraham wasn't a pastor. Isaac wasn't a pastor. Jacob wasn't a pastor. If you were to squeeze them in one corner and say, what? if you met them and say, hey, hey that, good to meet you. Uh, my name is, uh, you know, Samantha, what's your name? Oh, Abraham. Oh, what do you do? He would say, I'm a business person. They were all business people. They were not priests. Abraham was not a priest. Do you see him doing any priestly work for anyone? Isaac wasn't a priest. 
Jacob wasn't a priest. All those 20 years when he was nursing in Laban's company, what was Jacob doing? He was running business. He was a businessman. When he landed in Potiphar's house, what was he in charge of? Not the altar. He was in charge of the business of Potiphar. These were business people. So long before priests came on the scene, the first friends of God, God's covenant men were business people. And you make an error if you think that God takes business lightly. So because there were men of God who were also men of business, they were necessarily men of prayer. So that's why they always, the altar wasn't just for sure. It was a place of sacrifice, a place of communion with God, communication. So go build an altar in your business. Yeah. Look. That, you see, that's why you see the forces you're going to face. Huh? The kind of bribes they will ask you. The kickbacks they will ask you to give. All your checks that are not moving because someone has refused to sign. You're just moaning about it and trying to figure out who to bribe. You're wasting time. Yeah. You are wasting time. Go and set up an altar. One time, there was a piece of land we were processing for the church. And then they came and told me, there's this person in such and such an office. Who, it's the last signature he has refused to sign. He wants this amount of money. I told them, he's not going to get any money. Okay? I said, just leave it there and you see. Anyway, a couple of weeks later he had signed. But <laughs> I was like, this guy is going to see fire that he has never seen all his life. You know, some people, they need to understand that there is still God in heaven. Yeah, they think they are dealing with human beings. You just be like, huh? And my strategy usually is to not even remember their names. Yeah. Because I may go astray and mention their name in prayer. <laughs> so I don't want to know their names. I'm like, yeah, they are going to find out that not everything is for fighting. Not everything is for fighting. So, you are God's covenant woman. You are God's covenant man. He has a covenant with you through Jesus Christ. You can't fight here on the natural. Look, if it was about connections and natural what, Daniel would not succeed. He was just a slave. But he controlled three empires. <laughs> Daniel, Dan, the one you like to read about Daniel. He couldn't even get a wife because he was an eunuch. He could have sat there and felt sorry for himself. Kalemi. Remember, they weren't taken as adults. They were taken as young men, like teenagers. From, yanked from their homes. And those guys, when they raided the place, don't think they took the poor people. They took the rich families. The nobles. Yeah, castrated them and turned them into slaves. So they find themselves in Babylon. Far from home. Parents killed. Everyone killed. Nothing. And Daniel started every day three times. He would face Jerusalem and pray. I'm telling you, powerful forces came. It was power against powers. Yeah, no one could handle Daniel. Young man. So Nebuchadnezzar, until he left, 
Then Belteshazzar until he left. Then uh, one of those Midian empires until they left. At one time he was praying in a 21 day fast and the angel told him, Gwe. Okay, this is my version. <laughs> huh? Give me that scripture. <laughs> like, Gwe. Echirieli. What's up there? <laughs> you see, I was sent on day one, but the fight is thick. Yeah, he says, Michael had to come and help me out. As in, I left him there dealing with those fellows for me to come here. And he says, <laughs> kept help me. I'd been left there. Hmm? Left there with the kings. Not one king. In other words, all the successive kings that would come and rule the Middle Persian Empire. At that point, when Daniel was still alive, these guys hadn't come. I think the first one was Cyrus. Then Darius. Then Zaxis, Artaxerxes, all those guys, including up to when Esther was there. They were all there in the spiritual world, realm, waiting. They were already fighting these guys long before they showed up physically. So you were there saying, go and tell the people, me, I don't give a bribe. They say, huh? Where you touch? Okay. You'll just be like, where no, you touch it? Say, not everything is for bribing, my friend. Not everything is for bribing. Yeah, just go home and hit your potatoes and just, no, not everything is for bribing. Otherwise, you will see power against powers. Look, where things are, hmm, you have to be like that. Yeah. If you just say, hey, hey, I'm be sorry. Hey, days ago. What? <laughs> are you a covenant man or not? If you are, you must believe that there are forces that fight for you where your human intelligence and connections and phone numbers end. Where you're not. It's too quiet. People need a break or what's going on here? Yeah, just pray. It's simple. You just pray. You meet two, three people, you pray. For the and keep going. And let whoever wants to fight your business fight it and see. <laughs> Look, when you see a church like this, hmm, with property in many places and what, don't for one moment sit there and think that we just come in and everything is okay, no disturbances, what? God does his thing. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. One time, a, a new witch moved on to our village. Yeah. He had the guts to move from Chaliwajala to Chitukutwe. He was a very well known, you know, major operator. So he comes and sets up his new headquarters in Chitukutwe, complete with reeds, like a whole palace with grass-thatched huts, drumming the whole night, smoking pipes. So then I started finding chicken heads in my compound. It is, it's like, I think immediately noticed there is there are some other fellows here. So one time, I'm going, I'm going somewhere, and then I opened the front door. And at that time, we didn't have a gate. So stray dogs used to come around, village dogs. You know, it sees you, it runs off. But this dog, hmm? it refused to leave the door. Yeah. 
the front door. It couldn't move. I threatened it. I went and got a pipe and beat that dog. It was right there at the front door. Not moving. Ah, I was like, this dog is not alone. <laughs> so I called some guy who gave me the contact of some vets, people who, who can technically move it. They came and moved the dog. And they said, this witch, these guys, Hmm? Now, Bachi Susiza, yeah, they have now susad it. But I didn't mind them much. You know, sometimes Satan wants you to pay too much attention to him. I just kept going, took some prayer walks around. Ah, I'm there, and the neighbor reports because there was a guy whose house boundary was next to the thing. So on the neighborhood group, WhatsApp group, he was the one who was most fearful. He's like, guys, what? He says, I've reported the case to police. Police doesn't want to touch that guy. <laughs> one beautiful night, two, three weeks later, maybe a month, he's like, you know what, people? The whole thing caught fire. <laughs> The whole thing caught fire. And because it's grass touch, they couldn't save anything. Like everything burnt to zero. That's how the witch moved out of my neighborhood. He didn't liquidate his assets. <laughs> <laughs> There was no pivoting this time. Yeah, everything was up in flames. So you, you're there. Do you think people will let you off the hook as you're succeeding? Set up a prayer place. Three. Departures and beginnings. Departures and beginnings. These are business foundation. What was the first one? The blessing. The second one? The third? So most people know Abraham's story. God said to Abraham, get out of your country. So he departed as the Lord had spoken to him. So this is also, you know, you could say, is it a principle? Is it not? It is. Because there is always a departure from certain things. You always have to start. You may find that you're already succeeding in maybe fairly succeeding in one thing and then you need to begin something else. And the one you'll begin is the one that's going to sustain this other thing. But you're, you're down to, you don't want to start anything else. You're like, we only make lenses. They tell you that all the projections show that batteries are the next thing. And you have the capacity with your management system to go into batteries. You're like, no, for us, we are into lenses. And lenses are about to disappear because everything is going to go digital. No one wants your lenses. But everyone will want a battery. And you say, no. Why is Elon Musk very rich? Batteries. Are we understanding? So you must always have a mind for the next thing. What is the next thing? What is God saying? What is the next thing? One time Abraham went with Lot and they did quite well only that they started quarreling. And he knew it was time to depart from Lot. Maybe you started a business with someone. You are unequally yoked with a business partner. And you wonder why it's not flying. You may find that the other person is blessed because of you. Yeah. But they, they don't know, so they give you preconditions which even go against your, your, your faith and your values. 
I said, no, 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 no. For us, what? And then you're there compromising your values. There's no need to. You see, Abraham told Lot, you know, dude, choose the best part. Choose, choose whatever you want. He says, I'm here taking a nap. When you are finished choosing, come and tap me. Then I'll take whatever is left. So Lot chose the best, the well-watered lands, everything that was perfect. Okay? Then, then he went and tapped Abraham. He says, dude, wake up. I'm done. I said, oh, what have you said? Hey, Abraham, thank you. Hey, okay, bye-bye, see you. So Abraham went to the bad land where he had to dig wells to survive because the Lord chose the one where he didn't need to do any work. Naturally. Like, here the grass is good, the animals will eat, will make a lot of money. You leave the person who brought you along <laughs> to go where there is no water, the grass is dry. He has to do everything. But look, when it came down to it, it was Abraham saving Lot from trouble. You see, you're making a mistake to think that you're equal with an unbeliever or a person who doesn't have your values. Because <laughs> first understand who you are. And then you will never fear departures. You will never fear goodbyes. You will never fear it's been nice. As for me, yeah. You see, Abraham told the guy, the king of Sodom, who was saying, you know, uh, after I had given Melchizedek the tithe, he says, you know, actually take some of the things what Abraham said, I will not even take a shoeless. Yeah. Lest you say I made Abraham rich. And said, I have lifted up my hand to the Lord. And I made a vow. Yeah. So no one can say. You see, when you're blessed, you're blessed. Yeah. It is final. So. Who do you need to depart from? What product do you need to depart from? What place do you need to depart from? Sometimes your business is not working just because of where you are. But you're like, this is where we started. Where you started, you're trying, they don't buy the thing you're doing there anymore. So it's, it's the Bible calls us pilgrims. For pilgrims, it's always time to go. Always. Yeah, the quickest way to kill your business is to settle down and say, for us, we do papers. Papers? What else you people will be wanting papers forever? Yeah. I'm sure a few years ago, people would do back cloth where the wealthiest people in Uganda. Had we watched him back cloth just for artifacts. No one wants your back cloth. People are wearing jeans now. <laughs> Am I helping anyone or you, you don't want? Departures and beginnings. You are always moving, always going, always beginning. It's a fact of life for a pilgrim. Except, of course, your marriage. That one you're in for life. <laughs> Hang on and say, honey, the guy said departures and beginnings. <laughs> I've been seeing a certain girl that I think I need to begin with. No. Rather, you need to depart from the girl and begin strengthening where you are. Well, that was a light moment, but the way people are looking a bit gravely, it looks like it is someone's message. <coughs> what a shock. If you are convicted, please talk to your coach. <laughs> so what was the first one? The second? The third? The fourth is so sensitive. I'm not sure. I feel like we even need a break. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. This one. Is the room, is that open? Open. I need to be able to escape in case things get violent. 
and my office is inside, so I don't want to go this way, then they, they catch me on my way. You can handle. Father, please help the people in this room receive the next point. For behold, it is sensitive in Jesus' name. Four. Sons and daughters. In business. Sons and daughters. This is sensitive. I told you. I'm not going to go into scriptures. Actually, I'm running out of time, so I'm just going to start talking through. I'll send these notes to Pastor Chris because some of you may want to go and teach others. Me, I'm generous. No copyrights. You go teach. As long as you don't write a book out of it and say, for lessons, business lessons from the patriarchs (laughs) by Judith Nakakande. Now, Abram, the word Abram, God's covenant man, Abram, means exalted prince. Okay? Exalted prince. Abraham means father of many nations. Now, this one man called Abram the exalted prince needed to become Abraham to fulfill God's promises. I'm coming. Now, Abraham, our father of many nations, unfortunately had only one son of promise, Moja. Mm. And then his son, Isaac had only two. So even two. mm. Then came a fellow called Jacob who had 12 and was renamed Israel. Today, if you look on the world map, there's a country. It's not Abraham. It's not Isaac. It's Israel. Why? Why? He had 12 sons. Therefore. Short and tall. In your business. Maybe you are the exalted prince. You are not planning to have any business children. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? Do you get that with me? Jackie and Sons. Since 1906. Established. EST. You have no plans. You are like 70% of the shares are mine. 20% my wife. 10% 5 five, 5 first born. Second born. Mm. Everyone else is a servant. Is a servant. You can always come and go. You're making a big mistake. That is not how the kingdom of God works. I thought it's a sensitive point. Look, it will not be much. Yeah, just between you and your fit, whatever. It won't be much. All the brands you admire, the shares are not held by two people. And ever since the people gave out shares to thousands of people, including on the stock market, they still name them among the richest people, 20 richest, Forbes 400. There is no one there who has like 100% ownership of any company. In the top companies in the world. They are not there. Bill Gates doesn't own all of Microsoft. Why did you say? Jeff Bezos. Jeff Bezos. I think has 2% of Amazon. 
Now we Let's get ten percent. When I remember. And he has those billions. So you find the guy has 100, 150 billion, but the company is valued over a trillion. Two trillion. I think Apple entered two trillion the other time. I don't know whether they came back. Now, when you see that Apple is two trillion, don't assume there is someone who owns two trillion dollars. No, the company is owned by so many people. How do you know someone is a son or a daughter? They have an inheritance. Look, if I could change one thing about Ugandan companies, including the one you lead, this is the one thing I would change. People who are servants, you think they are, they are, they are going to be there for life, dying for you? Look, it's not a church. It's not like they are taking people to heaven. <laughs> Just to make for you money so you can go pl and play golf. And they give that, their whole lives to that. It's not going to happen. Unless they are buffoons. Or they, they, are such, they are so low capacity, they need a job. Yeah, that's why you have them. All the ones who are able to do something and to lead companies, they have since left you. Business foundations from the patriarchs. <laughs> Let me ask your neighbor, do you have sons or servants? <laughs> Look, you yourself, the reason you left and started your thing is because the, no one could give you a portion wherever you were laboring. So he said, uh-uh, second I could fit down in your thing. Yeah. You're repeating the same. That's why your boss is not here. And whatever it is they were running is no longer there, maybe. You're repeating the same mistake. What is it about money that makes you lose your mind that you can't even see the obvious that no one will serve you for life if they don't have a portion of the company? It's a no brainer. So you always lose your best people. The ones you've trained for years, to, who know everything, who know where everything works, who know where the suppliers are, where the market is, the ones you will always lose them because you want to use them. No one to be, no one wants to be used. They are not toilet paper. They are people. You're deluded. You just you see, money is ruling you. That's your problem. You think money is that important? Money is not that important. Money is just a means of operation. The most important thing is people. Money is not that important. If you had to lose one of your children, how much money would you exchange for it? Are they people? Or who in your circle of friends do you think is worth how much? To say, oh no, never mutual amulete sent a visit. <laughs> so now you understand people are valuable so why are you willing to lose people so you keep profit for some little more profit you're willing to lose people it's the same thing you're selling you're selling human beings yeah because they're like uh -uh. you're like this guy has really run the company. Let's give him, we are paying him a salary, but let's also give him an inheritance. Let's give him a, 10, a 5 percent, okay? So that when he's old and he goes where, uh, to, to his father's, his children will have a stake. It's now, be, now you have genified the company. It is now generational. You see, people will mourn for until Jesus comes out and we don't have any companies that are longer than 100 years old. Why? Because no one is giving any, any shares. So if the thing, if you own 100% and you die, and you die with it. It's, it's a no-brainer. We don't have companies that are 100 years old because we don't have people who are 100 years old.
When you own everything and you die, it dies because you are the thing is in your pocket. Yeah. Family business, family which family business? <laughs> what do you your family members want to do what you do? I came with my drink. I think I need to cool down. <laughs> These are very cold bottles, I think. I understand. You all don't like pastors who, who, you, who run the church as if it's their property. Why do you think we like business people who run the business as if it is their property? You see, that's hypocrisy. You don't want the pastors who run the church as if it's their property, but you, you run the business of it as if it's your property. Who told you the business is your property? Who told you the business is your property? You're a steward. Just as much as I'm a steward of this church, you're a steward of that business. And you don't expect me to be messing around and mixing resources of the church and my personal family things. And I don't expect you to be messing around and mixing the business money with your personal money. Yeah. And the only reason you are doing that is because you don't have other people to hold you accountable who are co-owners with you. Say, hey, hey Madam, go a center is a, is a business as it were. And you can't say hey, business young. It's business here. Fair. sons and daughters. I can tell you this. The first person to crack this thing in the worship Purpose business circles will, might go on to become the most successful business person, you know. Yeah. Because it's like a demon. Yeah. You see why all, all the pastors don't do well? Money. Yeah. All the pastors don't do well because of money. They are manipulating everything in the church for their personal gain. That's why they don't do well. That's why also the business people don't do well. Money. They are manipulating everything in the business for personal gain, including the obvious, obvious, uh, whatever of the business is not you. Yeah, you can't just raid the business coffers whenever you want to pay your personal rent at home and buy your wife a gift. It's you are not the business. It is the business you are you. That's not supposed, that's not supposed to be too complicated. Huh? Is this? Uh, eh, eh. business and they said something which was like boom boom you know when someone says something and then your heart misses a bit you know the Lord has just spoken to you so I, was, oh, yeah. so I, I said oh, that's a good idea so I said okay no rent in December mm, like your December rent is their Christmas gift all the tenants now, do you think they're about to go find other places to stay? <laughs> but what do I lose by giving them a month? That's innovation. It's a very small thing. It's just one month's income. And, and, and then I have the, my tenants now become my friends. You want to shift? You see? I am building others, by the way. They will be ready in about two or three months in around Kampala, so you can shift. And from when I just knew this is going to be my 
my strategy for all my rentals. And from that time, my, I, I found myself building elsewhere very fast. And I'm like, ah, yeah. So all my tenants, I'll be telling you, December, that's my gift to you. So I make sure I give fast fruits, January rent, and then December, generosity. Me, I only take 10 months. And even at 10 months, I, I tithe. So you tell me how you, you, you're going to, to catch up with me. That's innovation. Little things that put you ahead of the competition. One time, I needed a certain I needed certain medicine. So, apart from my doctor, who I will not tell you, there's one other person I talked to about medicines. So I talked to the director. I said, is this thing? I've been told to find it, you see. Uh, what do you think? He said, oh, no, no, that one, we have it. I said, okay. Great, let me send someone to get it. He said, no, where are you? I told him where I was. If I knew it, someone had arrived with a border to deliver it. I was like, man, if I was into falling sick, <laughs> I would be this guy's permanent client. <laughs> Innovation. What's the little thing you could do? I, I wish we had time. I think you're preparing like a, a business retreat or something where we can, instead of talking about it, we make the point for 10 minutes and then give you 20 minutes around the table to actualize it and come up with an action point. Because I know you're just going to say, ah, innovation. But then you not do, some of you may not do something practical. And I want you to do something practical. And believe me, there's something you can do. Just a little thing. Just a little thing. Not something which will take half your revenue. You know, just a little thing that makes you untouchable to your competition. It's there. Point six. Tithing. T-I-T-H-I-N-G. Tithing. You see, you find that all the points that have to do with money is where people... Yeah. And yet money is not supposed to be a big deal. Look, Abraham tithed. Jacob tithed. By which we can understand that Isaac tithed. Because how did Jacob know about it? So remember when Abraham went and fought those five kings and is coming back, then Melchizedek finds him. He gives him a tithe of all, then uh, rather he blesses him, then he gave him a tithe of all. Yeah. That's our father Abraham. And then Jacob, when he, was, when he had the dream and he was telling God, when he made a vow, he says, of all that you give me, I will surely give a tenth. That's why Laban could never sink him. He was a tither. Pastor Chris has a very powerful story about tithing. I don't know whether he wants to share it or it's not yet public knowledge. You can tell me whether yes or not yet. That's a signal. It's not yet. Okay. So, Tithing as a business. Now, if you're a Christian, my assumption is that you already conquered the little mountain of tithing as an individual. So that's not what I'm talking about. Unless you are one of those people who think that you and your business are the same. So you haven't practiced the principle of separation. But tithing as a business. How do you tithe as a business? You get your profit, not the revenue. The profit, right? And then you take off 10% and then you give it. That thing will make you untouchable. I'm telling you. 
It will put you in a completely different financial realm. I don't even know how it works. I, I particularly don't like to be involved with businesses that don't tithe. Yeah, I don't want to be a shareholder or anything like that. Because I know the power of tithe. Share your story. Director Grace thinks you're not ready, but I think you are. Uh, check, check. Is it on? Yes, it is. Uh, so, I'm thinking which story? The brief version. Okay. Last, let me start with, okay. A year, the, the year before, that's when I started tithing. But I was not very regular, but I started tithing. And I still saw very many uh, miracles through my business. We won a huge contract from one of our businesses. But the one that was really very evident for me was <clears throat> beginning this year, we have not every... So we worked out a formula where we've known our profit margin. So every check we get, we get a percentage equal to the tithe because we know our costing and, and tithed. So at the end of this year, uh, at the end of last year, sorry, at the end of last year, in about November, God gave us a contract which would double our income for the year. And there is no, it was just evident that there was no way, yeah, it was not, it was not like strategy or whatever. It was very evident that because of the principle of tithe, is how we got to, because, I mean, double twice, you sign one contract which has the same revenue as the entire years you've had in the last two years. Wow. Look, how about you do it as an experiment? Just, they say, let's, let's try. Yeah. Let's just try. Yeah, you, between you and your coach, you say, Coach, look at me properly. I want you to know this thing here. I am not doing it. We are going to try only once. And see what happens. You see this little church here? We started tithing when our income was so low when we took our check, to a, not a check, money to another church, we even had to explain to them why we are giving them that little money. Yeah, I remember one time taking to St. John's Kamocha because we used to do our rehearsals there. And I was like, we should honor this church. They've given us space to do rehearsals. 7,000 shillings. And you have to explain. Otherwise, they will be like, can we be in? Eh? What, what's this? <laughs> See dollars. A siringi kasamvu. That was the tithe of that week. The total offering had been 70,000. Tithe, 10%. To St. John's Church, Kamocha. In an envelope with a letter explaining. Last year, we tithed out to other churches 1.4 billion. From 7,000. Hmm? It's a principle. Now, do you think we have needs of 1.4 billion? Yes, we are building cathedrals. We want land. There is land. We've seen. There is 400 million, 300, 1 billion. You could say, ah, prudence, let's buy the land. Then we will never have anything. 1.4 billion tithe. And that's before the year ended. So I'm sure it probably clicked 1.5 billion. Yeah. Yeah, from 7K. Chichi. I calculate backwards. Hallelujah. 
We have a school across here. It, that school, it didn't matter what we did, we could never make it profitable. We could never make that. It was so hard for five years. I was like, this school has taken our peace, our space in the church. All the parents are quarreling. We don't even know if the kids will pass. We've changed curriculums twice. We could never. Until one day, a light bulb, bling! Why aren't we tithing? The parents couldn't pay school fees. Those who run schools, you understand parents and school fees. Yeah. Like a person who has just been worshipping God like this in the church will abuse you in your in a mother tongue. <laughs> Properly. Uh, all my stories are true. That day they said, no entering without school fees. In the basement there. They abused the teachers. In the mother tongue, in vernacular. Look, you see me here. I've seen things. Yeah. I, I'm young, but in my youthfulness, I've seen too much. But we said, okay. Whether they want to go, let them go. But we started tithing. We said, if we tithe, we will be okay. Parents came, the ones who could pay. <laughs> The ones who want to pay left. The ones who wanted to pay came. The school stabilized. For the first time, we made a profit. It was a small profit, but we made a profit. Last year, we made so much profit that we, we have to figure out how to use some of the money in the school to avoid paying too much income tax. Yeah. Because we are going to pay income tax of more than $300 million. We said, no, 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 no. What do we need to invest in the school? <laughs> work on the labs. Work on this. Give bonuses. I mean, let's not donate all this money. Update, upgrade, buy laptops, computers for the teachers. Well, let's not donate all this money to, to, to URA. Yeah. Legally. So we had to first spend like, <laughs> like 250 million. Then we still paid a lot. There's a small school there with 200 students, but the money is crazy. And, and we charge very low school fees. Yeah. For, our, for our international, because we are, we are Cambridge, people pay twice or more than three times elsewhere what we charge. But we are tithers in the school. The money, they, they just... It became a problem. Like we have never had this much money. Now we are looking at what are we going to do with this money? Now, for you, it might be in your business. A tax of 300 million is little. I bless you, but for us, it was a new experience. Tithing. When I started writing, what? what what book was it? One of my books is when I realized start tithing. In 2018, it must have been so for financial growth. Start tithing off your book sales. I, I didn't even do profit. I just did sales. The book is 30,000. Tithe is 3,000. From when I started for the last six years, a week has never gone by when I've not sold books. Mm -mm, I don't have a marketing thing. I don't have a publisher. I, I, it's just every week we sell books. Every week. Little company there with one employee. <laughs> yeah, only the administrator.
The company needs to grow, yeah. <laughs> Says that it's not my main thing, so I don't want to have to manage too many things there. So, tell your coach, I'm going to try. Just try. Please. Please try. Yeah. Try and see what happens. You'll be surprised. What was the first one? The blessing. The second one? The third one? The fourth one? The fifth one? The sixth? The seventh is financial planning. Now I'm going to tell you what kind of financial planning because I think some of you might say, oh yeah, we've been already doing a lot of financial planning, you know. There is a financial plan that Joseph gave Pharaoh when he saw that dream of seven thin cows, seven fat cows, seven thin cows, seven whatever's of grain. And they brought him from the prison to say, okay, Pharaoh has, has had a dream. No one can interpret it. So he says, okay, it's going to be seven years of plenty, seven years of scarcity. This is what Pharaoh should do. Why, why was Joseph dead certain about the numbers? I don't think it was like a revelation or an epiphany. This is what he probably saw his forefathers doing. This is what he was doing in Potiphar's house. This is what he was doing in the prison. That's why the prison was so prosperous. It was better to be inside the prison than outside. The Bible says he prospered in the prison. Prosper. He just said, collect one-fifth of the produce. That's all. Collect one-fifth of the produce. Collect one-fifth of the produce. You see, there are things which the more you do, the more you succeed. Collect one-fifth of the produce. It's like, that's all. Ah, can I tell you, this is a spiritual principle. It's not an, it, this is not economics. Because for seven years, all that Joseph was collecting was 20%. But the 20% in the seven years of scarcity fed the whole nation, including the surrounding nations. How is it possible? If you're, if you're consuming 80% per year for seven years, how can you be able to use only 20% per year for seven years to, for more people? Apart from the fact that it is a spiritual principle. And that's when push came to shove seven years, they came and said, we're out of money. And, uh, no, we're out of food. Uh, bring the money. So they brought the money. Huh? Give me the scriptures. We are now like those ends. 47. Joseph gathered up all the money that was found in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan for the grain which they brought and Joseph brought the money into Pharaoh's house. The one who had the 20% collected all the money from those who didn't have the 20% saved up. Okay, next. The money failed. So the money is finished. Came and said, give us bread. Why should we? This is, yeah. Bring your livestock. Uh, you are out of money, bring movable assets. Yeah, or what TV data? <laughs> or what woofer later? <laughs> <laughs> Laptop later. Park the car here. So they brought all the operational things. Donkeys, what? He fed them with bread in exchange for all their livestock. That year, next, he says, next. Uh, so cut. Now, who owns all the livestock? Pharaoh, the one who had 20%. The ones who are blasting all their profits, they've had to give up their businesses to the people who had the money. Okay. Then the, it was also finished. Livestock left, what? 
Yeah. What is left is our bodies and our lands. Buy us and our land. <laughs> Buy us and our land. Those of you who refuse to get land, I never let you. You think, you, yeah, you think, you think. <laughs> Look, all of us who did is buying land. Mokwano was buying land. Bill Gates is buying land. Zuckerberg is buying land. You are saying, no, no, our money. You think that your, your business is more profitable than uh, Microsoft or Meta? The people who run very highly profitable businesses are buying land. You, you insist on renting. Pivoting. Anyway, next. So anyway, all the land became, those of bought all the land for Pharaoh. It's a simple thing, 20%. Get 20% of your profit, lock it away in an investment that will make sure that that company is always growing. It will, that 20% will never leave. It will never belong to the, to the company owners. It will never belong to the directors. It will never go anywhere. It only goes back to grow the company. I told you about our 10%. Now, if you know how to calculate, you can tell that there is a 20%. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's why we're always buying land and properties for this church and building buildings. Because of the 20%. When we come and say, arise and build, people make pledges, they to they're just stopping up. What people contribute to, they are just stopping up something that is already there. It is established. It is a policy. So every year, as long as someone puts money in the offering bank, the value of the church is growing because we don't spend all the money. There is 20% that is always the church's value is always increasing by 20% of all the money that people give. If I sat you down to calculate the 20% of your profit for the last 10 years, <laughs> and you've been spending it on perishables, Look, your business can have a completely different investment and line of business that it gets to a point where it doesn't matter what happens in your main business. You have something else that is just untouchable. Yeah. It's now you can't wish this church away. Yeah. It doesn't matter how many accusations people come up with. You can't wish it away. Because it has value. The value didn't go into the pastor's car and I don't know what, suits, shoes, and whatever. And it's like, huh? there is an accusation, there is a controversy. We are out of here. Where are your suits? No. <laughs> well, if we go now, what are we going to do with the buildings? You have to resolve, even if you quarrel to what degree. You have a problem, you have property. So you have to come back and solve your quarrels. Yeah. And then you continue with the mission. But where churches don't have anything, once they quarrel, everyone goes end of church. Yeah. 
financial planning. Where is your 20 percent? Is there someone here with a 20 percent testimony? I believe there are some people who have walked in obedience and wisdom. Anybody? You know, some people may want to hear real. Uh, Pastor Chris is the only one who is doing these things. No wonder your business is prospering. So, uh, still this year. Now that mic is too low. Last year. Last year we were deliberate to do the same thing. We saved 10%, not 20, but it was more than than 20% of profit. So what has happened? That, that same contract that we won has required us to buy lots of assets for that contract, uh, which we have to import. So we are using that money. It's like we are not we are, we don't have to go to a bank. Please, uh, yeah, overdrafts and all that. So and also still in the same testimony, what I didn't share earlier is that because of that, we didn't use any overdrafts last year. We didn't. We had cash any all the time. Overdraft. Yeah. Yeah. Overdraft. Mm -hmm. So. For this particular case, that the, the, the resources we need for this contract, because we have, to, we have to buy a lot of equipment, including a car, we don't have to look for a bank. Yeah. Wow. Coach Stephen, please come. He needs to come here because some people are online. Mike, Mike. So, um, since 2019, been practicing 20% for the business, and in 2020, our landlord decided to get rid of us. And wow. we had to move to another space in a month. So, um, I paid uh, six months' rent. Uh, renovated the new space without having to go and borrow for using the 20%. And it has also given us liberty to do experiments after experiments to see what will work, what won't work. I can go on and on and on. Wow. And land, yeah. Even us, we bought land, by the way, from the 20%. Oh, yes. Uh, on 23rd of December, we bought land cash for code clinic i like it so much let's go i was only going to, i was actually going to be quiet but then the lord was holding me like uh -huh. so you will overpower the enemy how except by your testimony so i have to come forward um we learned the principle of 20% during uh, when we're doing Harvest Institute for leaders. Mm. That was, I did that 2018 class. And then, so the whole of 2019, we started to practice a principle. And 2020 hit, COVID 19 hit, schools were closed. <laughs> schools were closed. I own a child care center. Those ones suffered the most, because even when they were releasing people, they stayed closed. But we used our 20% to pay rent and pay our, our staff without reducing their salaries. Wow. See that? So, go, go and try. Again, this one also, tithing to try. This one also, try. Yeah. One day you wake up and there's money on your business account and then you're itching and vibrating and saying, why is the money there? Why is the money there? <laughs> Eight. Consecration. Consecration. Let me start with the scripture. This might help explain where I'm coming from. Genesis 17.1. We are finishing. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am almighty God. Walk before me and be blameless. 
Then that's the chapter where it tells him to circumcise everyone in his what? In his household. It's like this thing of, yes, we have the promises. I've given you the promises. I've given you the blessing. But now I'm asking you to do this thing for me. You see, this can be confusing sometimes for Christians because salvation is by grace through faith. But when God is going to use you to do mighty things, it's, it's not just grace and faith. There will be certain levels of consecration where it says, now, this thing. That's why Paul says, uh, teaches a lot about grace, who say a bishop must be. Husband of one wife, blameless, not given to wine, this, this. He lays out all these things. What's that? Consecration. Am I making sense? And separation, operating at a certain level of ethics. Remember Potiphar's wife? How did Joseph survive? Consecration. He knew if I go in for this thing, the promises, the dreams I saw as a child of the stars and the moon and the sun and the 12, what are they called? Not like bushels, but it's not going to happen. <clears throat> now, I don't know how we are going to deal with this. Uh, this one, I leave to the coaches. Yeah. But some things you just have to decide that, look, the whole thing of everyone is doing it doesn't apply to me. I'm not everyone. Yeah, because there are great and precious promises ahead for you. And the enemy wants to scatter them by giving you little, little things here and there. A time will come where you're operating at a level where no one can dare ask you for a bribe. Yes. Yeah. But to be there, you have to not give it now. Yeah. I think so. So that's consecration. It's about ethics. Look, if you are, you know, you reap what you sow. If you, the business leader, are unethical, the people you attract will be unethical. And now your business, you need to spies, <laughs> cameras, police, everything. Like everyone is trying to figure out how to rip you off. But how do you prevent that? By the seeds you sow. Nine. Asset. I called it great asset management. Great asset management. I'm going to run through the rest quickly. Now. They say there are two types of rich people. There are two types of people in Kampala. Those who are rich and those who look rich. <laughs> the two are not the same. Let's not get confused. Wealth is not an idea. Wealth is measured by assets. How do we know you're prosperous? By what you possess. The Bible says Abraham was very rich in livestock, silver, and in gold. Genesis 13, 2. Now, this is also, you know, the Bible says the crown of the wise is their riches, but the foolishness of fools is folly. This is also something that uh, is interesting. But let me lean into, into it a little bit. People talk a lot about revenue, profit, Gross profit, net profit, revenue, gross profit, net profit. But no one wants to talk about the statement of financial position. How valuable is your company? Like, what does the company own? Why should your company be like a pipe instead of a well? It's just value going through, but there's nothing that stays behind. Mm. If 
you are, if you are serious about the future and you want to build a company that will serve generations, you must have asset retention. The company has to be growing. You have to be buying, purchasing. You know, that's why people have all these things. Leasing, lease this, lease that. You know why you're leasing? You actually don't believe in owning. I don't think that's a perfect will of God. Yeah. You have to get to a place where you own some, the, the thing, it had some, if they shake it like this, something will fall out that is of value. It's not like the only thing of value you have is your logo and your tongue. Too much talking. <laughs> <laughs> intellectual property. <laughs> no, there has to be what we call value. And this company was valued at 200 million shillings two years ago. It's now 400. It's now 500. Then a few years later, it is 800. Are not goodwill, like assets. Be they physical, be they uh, movable, fixed, operational. Yeah. Like you can't have a factory where the whole uh, production line is borrowed. But the only thing you own is the plastic that makes the bottles and the, the, the liquids that go in them. And the glue that seals, but other is everything doesn't belong to you. I don't see how that works. Ah, uh, Quietness Presbyterian Church has joined us. You see, the challenge is everyone wants to be in the service industry. All the countries where you, you say service industry, service, they first did the manufacturing, they did the, the whatever they did, that's the hard work. This is not United States. You are in Uganda. If everyone jumps into service industry, but we can't even fix potholes, what are we doing? What are we servicing? The potholes. <laughs> so, and where also every time you need to step up, like he just said, you have to borrow. You go to the bank to borrow for the equipment because you are not doing the 20%. Now, whose equipment is it? It's for the bank. That's why you don't sleep easy. Build some assets. Yeah. This little church you see here has some little assets. Yeah. At least even without counting all the other things, property only worth more than 25 billion. So you can't just kind of go away. No. Go where? What are you going to do? And as I told you, for me, until I see 700 physical buildings, I don't think this church is safe. Yeah. If I see 700 physical buildings, that will be, uh, yeah. That, then you say, okay. Number one. So also you have something where you say, we have some value. Some things. Mm, tangible value. Do something. Amen. So have some assets. Don't be the, the only asset is your talks, talking. You're talking. Too much talking. See, when you don't have, you have to talk a lot to make up for what is missing. Okay, what's the first one? The second one? The third? Fourth? Fifth? Sixth? Uh-huh, consecration. Ten is systems and longevity. These are things we learn from the patriarchs. 
Now, let me just tell you the, two, the, the story, two stories and you will connect quickly. You remember the, the, the Samaritan woman? Is it Samaritan? What's she called? Not Samaritan woman. The, the, no, no, the woman that at the well. Uh, the one with six husbands that Jesus talked with. You remember that one? Let me show you a verse. It says in verse 5 of John 4, So he came to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Verse 6, Now Jacob's well was there. How long ago had Jacob built this well? Like 2,000 years. How long do you intend? The thing that you've set up, if you went away for six months, <laughs> Pastor Chris, one of the assignments that should be given in School of Practical Business is the entrepreneur stepping away for a certain number of weeks as a test. You have it in mind. Uh -huh. <laughs> These bills of you check daily. Bring a sign. No. Six weeks or something like that. Away. And you have to even go probably work in another company that is better than yours to learn something. It's like you're on study leave. Study leave. My sister, can your company survive a six week study leave? It can. Can I shake your hand? <laughs> this is a real deal, eh? Are you the, are you the big boss? Ah, let me shake your hand again. <laughs> You've tested for one month. Ah, uh, this is why they have already tested. Ask your neighbor. How about you? <laughs> That's why you sat there. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, who is my neighbor? When I said, to ask your neighbor, who is my neighbor? Six weeks, four weeks, two weeks. Everyone, they will tell you what they can endure. Because some people, after three days, they may not find their business. And you don't want them to play, blame school of practical business. Basura business, young. They sent me away for three days. <laughs> This guy, the whale has been there 1,000 years and it's still working. People are still coming from that city to get water from this well. 1,000, it's Jacob's well. Ah. Hmm. What do you have into? So, systems, the patriarchs, they built things that lasted thousands of years. Eleven is generosity. This is different from tithing, eh? Mm, generosity. You see them all practicing generosity with the people who are around them. Sorry. The table. Is that a system that has failed after how many minutes? What a shock. Ah, does it have the, the staying thing? Okay, let's just don't shake it. Let's finish. 
We are finished. Wow. So generosity, uh, that's 11. So generally, yeah, be generous with the people inside the business and outside the business. Be generous with your suppliers, with your customers, with your staff. Diligence and faithfulness. You know, Jacob, when he was at Laban's farm, he improved. He said when he came, he had nothing. By the time he was leaving, he left Laban with a lot of wealth. He was diligent. Joseph, in Potiphar's wife, Potiphar's wife, house. Please delete that. Joseph in Potiphar's house. So Joseph found favor in his sight. Verse 4 of Genesis 39. And served him. Then he made him overseer of his house. And all that he had, he put under his authority. So it was from the time that he made him overseer of his house and all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was on all that he had in the house and in the field. Thus he left all he had in Joseph's hand. And he did not know what he had except for the bread which he ate. Wow. You know, faithfulness is, is uh, shown as increase. Remember the talents? Yeah. Well done, good and faithful servant. Is that no one done? Two to four. Five to ten. Now, one, one to one. Now, assuming that your business was owned by Jesus and he came to check, he would cry. You would find that you may not get a very strong well done because the value has not gone up. And the problem is you think it's your business. Now imagine me thinking this is my church. Even in the example, it sounds bad. Now you thinking that's your business. Even in the example, it sounds bad. That's 12. 13, community benefit. What do I mean? There are people who are going to do well just because they are attached to you. Why was Lot doing well? He was Abraham's labors. That's all. So get used to it. There are people who are going to do well because of you. So if you are that kind of person who says, sure, how can this person be prospering because they are attached to me? You want the people who are attached to you not to prosper? Yeah, if the thing you have is of God, everyone who is attached to it must be prospering. All your employees, all your suppliers, all your neighbors, everyone should be like, man, from the time that guy moved into the neighborhood, eh? it's raining money around here. Things are okay. He paved the road. He created jobs. So community benefit. Lastly, Sabbath. A day of rest. For the last 3,000 years plus, the, thing, the two things that have differentiated the Jews from the rest of the world, which also explains their incredible success, is tithing and working six days out of seven. Whether they are Practicing Jews or non-practicing Jews. That one, you go to Israel, even the lifts don't work on, on Saturday. Yeah, they stop on every floor. It doesn't matter whether you say you're practicing Jew or not. They stop on every floor so that you don't press, which is considered work. So you, you're burning the candle from both ends. It's not going to help you. Yeah. You must have a day when the business is closed. A principle. Thank you, Pastor Chris, for the opportunity to talk to these billionaires. What a session!
What a session. Guys, let's appreciate Apostle one more time. I told you, I told you, and we have just begun. We've just begun. Thank you so much, Apostle. I know we are going to have you again, and we can't wait, uh, but we really, really appreciate your wisdom. There's always, you know, I've been in this class for all these years, but there's always something new. Yeah. So thank you so much, especially for giving us business insights from the Bible. Yeah. That's, I think that's the biggest tool we can receive, to know that our businesses have their foundations in the Word of God. So thank you so much.